It's Friday, and you know what that means. Is it the day of the tentacle? No, it's time for the Pedestrians Gamecast. Good one. So, <laughs> there's loads of, we've got loads of people here this week that all sound exactly like us. Yeah, lots of people from Glasgow and Birmingham. Yeah, with the same voices as us. Yeah. And we've just sent them all home. <laughs> we don't need them anymore. Yeah. We just wanted to sound like a breakfast show. <laughs> Good, good. So, uh, how's your week been, Mr. Graham? I'm just stroking this this thing here. It's very like, pleasing, isn't it? It's I nice like, on the fingertips. I like, I like. It's like kind of spiky. This but is the noise it sounds like. If we were to slow this noise down, it would sound like wind. Ah, yeah. There you go. So, what what was the question? Uh, it was really simple. It was how was your week? How was my week? What did you do? What did you get up to? Uh, I. I Spent all my money. I, I've booked up to go to see my friend Ned in San Francisco. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. So are you three weeks going ago. to America with flowers in my hair? Yeah. yeah. So hopefully uh, I'm going to be there for three weeks. We're going to take in the Burning Man festival. Yeah. That sounds very hippie. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to burn some men. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. I thought you were you're taking your lube with you as well. Yeah. Of course. Of yeah, course. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So uh, I was speaking to, I was thinking to myself, like, how much money should I take? And wasn't really sure. So I spoke to Ned thinking, okay, so if we're going to the festival for a week, I'm... Well, who's, gonna... you can name checking Ned, but... Ned, Ned is a legend. Because yes. if people are listening in, people, people are listening in Scotland, they're just going to think you're hanging around with some fucking low life. Some, some Ned called Ned. Yeah. He's a, he's an American guy, American, that uh, used to live in Germany, but now he doesn't anymore. So, so you got to know him in Germany? Yes. Yeah, yes. okay. So, I also know Ned. You also do know I do, Ned. I do know Ned. Yeah, yeah. good, good. He's a fantastic man. He's, he's a very, very manly looking man. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Strong jaw. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, so I was speaking to him thinking, okay, the middle week, going to be uh, at a festival, wouldn't need to take much money for that. So I said to him, how much money do you think I'll need in total? The first thing he said was, well, we're going to burn- Burning Man, so you'll probably need about 2,000 US dollars for that. And I was like, what the fuck? What, what, it, what, hang on, but I thought it was like, I thought the whole thing was like, you know, like in exchanging of culture and goods and... Bodily fluids. So it's basically just, it's, it's, it, Burning Man has been reduced to... $2,000. Uh, to to $2,000. <laughs> I don't... Right. I, like I've not had a chance to actually speak to him about it, but I I don't know what what you could spend. Maybe you need to pay for I don't know ten or something. I don't know a two grand tent. Yeah, Do I mean know? it must cost a bit to get there because you got to yeah. get it to the fucking desert, right? I think they've got a car, so maybe he's putting in like petrol or something. Who know. knows? Yeah, who knows? So if any of the the listeners have any suggestions, what I can do with my other two weeks in San Francisco yeah any gaming suggestions that'd be cool I know it's a big gaming culture out there so well you could uh, you could hit up some coffee shops I know someone that owns a coffee shop out there yeah I do indeed yeah I could take a laptop and pretend I'm writing my first novel yeah go do it man I'll uh, I'll actually see if I can hook you up with uh, with, uh, with a name and number cool free coffee uh, yeah that'd be quite cool yeah, um, other things you could do you could go to uh, Alcatraz I could go to Alcatraz whilst yeah. you're there on the boat on the way over you have to listen to There She Goes by the Lars <laughs> Why? Uh, just it's just what you do, isn't it? Okay, cool. It's for sitting in films and that. <laughs> nice. What, and nice. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much that's pretty much it. Oh, reenact. Oh, the, jump a, like do a, do a stunt in a car like down the the hills, the hill things like jumping on the little bits mm-hmm. and just like and then you just uh, you just missed ah uh, tram uh, ding 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 and you just uh, right it. So what you should what you're saying is I should continue the hijinks of our podcast into real life. Yeah, you should, you should do that. Bring it out there and uh, rent rent yourself an old like um, like a, a Ford Crown Vic and just fucking race around the streets with no regard for human life. Because that that wouldn't be illegal or anything. If you don't come back having run somebody over <laughs> and maimed them, I will be disappointed. I'll, I'll try my best. Or at least at least like hit. Uh, a pram that turned out to be full of cans. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I will, I will try my best. But the one thing that concerns me is when I got the message back from him. You know, on Facebook, it like says where the person is at the moment. Yeah, sometimes. it said he's in Auckland. Does that, yeah. Is that not like a bit kind of gangster rappy? <laughs> uh, I, th- I think it's like, I think, uh, well, 
I mean, you're talking to a, a boy from the hood, right? <laughs> I'm from I'm from I'm from Erdington, right? So I fucking I know what you I know, know what he's like, man. Yeah, but uh, and I think I think Oakland's, you know, like I think it's uh, it's got a reputation, but you know, I'm not one to judge. I've never been there. Am I going to get beef? I think I think you might have to take a beating to get some respect. Yeah. I think it's one of them towns. You know what I mean? Is it one of the t- kind of towns that I would go in and I like shoot someone straight away just to get like respect? Just so I think you'd get killed. Yeah, you I think, think you'd get killed. Yeah, yeah. Bef- before I could, I shoot think someone. like I think you know someone fronts you, you fucking you, you give nothing but grill. Just you know like have a fight. If you get taken down, you just take it, man. And then the next time, then then dude see you on the street, they'll be like respect he can take a punch he can take a he can take a he can take a fight or they'll just they'll just knife you and yeah take take your money maybe I'll start like speaking to them as if I'm in regulate by Warren G yeah uh, I could just kind of have that kind of dialogue going on I don't think that, I don't think it'd work yeah. I think it'd make things worse <laughs> some some pasty white Scotsman <laughs> like trying to pull off some kind of macula speaking gangster that would be brilliant yeah <laughs> I'm sure they'd love that they'd be like I'd be like oh I love it I love it when pasty white dudes come <laughs> and uh, and try and talk to me like they know what the fuck they're going on about that'd be hilarious yeah. uh, I would say things like n-word please <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> It's like I'm being GTA with Trevor when he like goes to hang out with uh, with Franklin, and he as he's walking up, he actually says, "How's it going, my N word?" <laughs> and then falls over the fence. Brilliant, nice. So yeah, so, so nice. it might be a really nice place. I don't know. I do know someone who used to live there, and he said he had a bad time. In Oakland? Yeah. Okay. Good. He said he had a bad time. Yeah. So uh, yeah. forward, huh? I think you are you, you're going to the Erdington of America. <laughs> so it's going to be like. Considering I come, from, I was born in Paisley. Then I, I think. Oh, what's Paisley though? It's like, you know what I mean. Like, there's a toy named after it. Yeah. And an Ian. So <laughs> like, he's gone. He, he's gone now. So. Gone. <laughs> died. Did he? Yeah, a couple of weeks ago. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, he died. Okay. There you mind. go. Breaking news: Ian Paisley is dead. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's a sad. That's just, that's sad. Yeah, so uh, that was that's your week has been planning that. Yeah, yeah, and I got I've got another kind of small postal grape. Okay, it's it's a good thing and a bad thing. Like this is going to need its own jingle at some point as well, isn't it? Yeah, should we leave a little spot for postal grape jingle? Yeah. Grail goes postal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so go on. I it was a good thing and a bad thing. The the bad thing was like I ordered, like I've spent all my money. I've got no money left. I ordered. Uh, High resolution, uh, like digital music player and uh, headphones. Wait, hang on a minute. A high resolution digital music player. Yeah. Wh- so it's what? like it's it's like a higher kind of uh, performance than CD. So you've got MP3 and then above that CD, and this is above CD quality. Well, why would you say CDs above MP3? Because it is. Well, it depends what 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 byte rate it's at, surely. But do, if it goes over a certain byte rate, then is it not MP3 anymore? Like, is it not flak then? See, these are flaks. So you, you, we don't know enough about this. Yeah, yeah, no, we don't know. I think I'm, I'm, I'm going into an area that I, I, I feel like I want to know. I feel like I want to sound like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but I probably don't. Well, apparently, like, MP3 is below CD and flak is above CD. So this is what it plays. Got this delivered. So when I got back to the apartment, opened the, the outside door. On the stairs, like the communal stairs, the package just sitting on the ground. Just there. Just like like 400 euros worth of kit just sitting in a box. I mean, what if that had been taken by some inscrupulous neighbour? Like me, if I'd found it <laughs> for someone else. So this is the thing, though. <laughs> if, if that would have been me, I would have taken the goods and then phoned up whoever you ordered it from and said, where's my stuff? Yeah. And then they said, well, it was delivered to your house. So, well, I didn't, I didn't fucking have it. No, I never, never signed for anything. Yeah, I didn't sign for it. Where, where is see, it? This Send is me why, another one. This is why Germany is not like Britain, though, because there's not British people like you and you and I here. Like, there's not enough of us. You know what? Come. I've actually done that five times. In, in Germany? In Britain. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to say who it was, but it's named after a forest. <laughs> and, um, yeah, yeah, I've, I've done it five times, ordered something, and, and had it. And then said, I didn't get that. And then had something else turn up. And then phoned them up and just gone, forget it. I don't want it anymore. And I've had two things from them. You know what I mean? For free, and they gave me a refund. I didn't, even, I didn't even feel like an asshole. You know what Amazon- but, it, but, it, but the thing is, it wasn't, it was like actually from Amazon and not like from 
a small supplier. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. So you're fighting the man. Yeah, I was like, I'm. Just, oh, I just said who he was. Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! They're coming after me. <laughs> That's funny because Amazon just favorited one. I, of I don't speak the truth, man. I'm just making it up. I'm just making it up. You know what I mean? It was only four things. It wasn't. This funny. is all stories. <laughs> this is this is best stories, man. Yeah, Amazon just favorited one of our last tweets as well, and now you've got to go go and do them like that. I would no, no. <laughs> if, if, if it wasn't Amazon, it was uh, it was Black Forest. <laughs> Black Forest Gato. Yeah, yeah. It was, but anyway, yeah. So yeah, I yeah. didn't do it. I, I didn't do it. Cool. <laughs> I think can, you can feel him nodding his head there. And I, I, DC trainers, they were awesome as well. You bought trainers from Amazon? Yeah. You have some kind of yeah. hippie. I am, yeah. Fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> they, they, they're a really good uh, deal. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So I also had uh, another <laughs> bit of fortune. But I enjoyed that for the fact that it got delivered and then I didn't have to go to the post office. So it was kind of like a love hate relationship with Yeah, that. you're like, oh, you did it. You, you did something good. But you also fucked it up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like once I got into the house and it was everything was okay, I was like, okay, that was good. But it could have gone fucking pear shit. It's like know? it's like when the puppy shits in the puppy shit tray, mm-hmm. but kind of squirts, it all goes on the fucking skirting board as well, and you're like, you're almost there. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or almost there. So so that was that. And also, I got a, a box of um, Bird's Eye Chicken Nuggets. Yeah. And it said 11, 11 chicken nuggets on the How box. Many? 11. <laughs> <laughs> 11 in my Scottish accent 11 uh, chicken nuggets and when I opened it there were 12 so fucking happy days wow that's like that's a that's a big plus yeah yeah so yeah. I got like a 12 more chicken nuggets for free that's so. absolutely amazing so my, my week was fucking awesome as you can see yeah <laughs> how yeah. about yours uh, mine was great since the last show uh, the last time we left off I had a minimal amount of sleep on Friday night and Early Saturday, I was up and at him. I had to go to Schwabach. Of course. And uh, my girlfriend was in a belly dance show. So uh, I went along to, you know, support. Like, mm-hmm. I'm there, I'm there. It's the first show of hers I've, I, like, managed to get to because now uh, I haven't got the commitment to work and stuff. I mm-hmm. can get there. So it's the first show. It's important. And then, uh, and then when she picked me up from the train station, she said... Uh, what do you want to do? Do you want to do the spotlight, or do you want to do lights or sound? And I'm like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? It's like, well, you got to, you got to do something. You thought so, you were just going to get. I thought I was just going to go and sit there and just, just like you know, watch Enjoy the, show. the bellies. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and I ended up, uh, I ended up working, which was really fucking cool. Okay. So I learned how to, I learned how to use a spotlight, which is harder than people think. Do you not just aim it at what you want to aim it at? No, you don't. That's the thing. Because you've also got like the size of it and stuff. Mm-hmm. <coughs> so it's kind of like it's kind of like a camera operator almost. So instead of zooming out, you know, like if you, you would zoom out if the action gets bigger, so mm-hmm. you could sort of, you know, yeah. take everything in. But with the spotlight you need to make the spotlight bigger. So you can cap so it encompasses all the action mm-hmm. as well as moving it and then if you know, if you if you're trying to put emphasis on something, then obviously you need to, you know, what I mean, zoom in or, or or make the spotlight smaller and and keep it, follow it around without it suddenly jolting around or oh, okay. like wobbling. So it took me about I don't know, fifteen or twenty minutes to kind of get used to it, and then I sort of you know slowly got into it. A couple of fuck ups, but you know. So what you're saying is that for people that are experts in lighting, you, it took you fifteen minutes to learn their trade. Uh, no, no, I'm <laughs> saying it took me 15 minutes to not look like a complete idiot on the, on the, on the spotlight. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but it was good fun and it gave me something to do. So it was like a whole extra element and. Cause um, you were the problem. And I boards. quite, I literally put the spotlight on my girlfriend. Nice. It was, it was fantastic. So that was really nice. Next time maybe you could build a pedestal. I, I might do and then put her on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. But, um. I, I'm going to turn all of these sort of sayings into actual <laughs> acts. That would be great. Yeah. But uh, and we also decided that we're going to buy a bitching van. A bitching van? Yeah, we're going to buy a bitching van so we can go away for weekends. Okay. And, uh, like a white van? Like a white, white it's van? It's not going to be white. It's actually black with black tight windows. Well, that's a bit rapey. Yeah. It's not. It's it's mm. actually pretty fucking rad. Yeah? Yeah. What make? It's uh, it's um, it's an opal, which is it, the English word for opal is voxel. Mm-hmm. Many people don't know that. Yeah. It's a vivaro. It's one of the uh, voxel vivaro. It's, it's, it's it, look, it looks like a, it looks like a Renault Traffic and Nissan also make the same van. 
they're exactly the same. Water so is it decked out inside? Like no, no, it's stuff? just it's just a, a, a mini bus. But we're gonna rip the stuff out and put some fucking boards in and like a seat that turns into a bed and cooker and shit. Cool, cool. And uh, then we can just like you know we can jet and fucking holiday and stuff. So it's gonna be pretty nice. It's gonna be pretty uh, pretty gnarly as well. And we we can use it to go to game festivals and stuff. We we could we could do that, and I could I could also with my uh, with my vinyl cutter, I could also cut some huge decals with pedestrians. Nice. On the side, it would look, it would look pedestrians fucking, on tour. It would look wicked, and we could just take them up afterwards. Yeah. Or, or just leave them on. It'd be funny because we'd be in a van as pedestrians, and pedestrians would be on the sidewalk or yeah. the pavement. As if you're not American. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and the pavement. <laughs> could, could we could we uh, drive to like E three? I think we could. Yeah. Yeah. Not well. I, we might have trouble getting over the water. Over the water. Yeah. Could, could take a ferry, but problematic. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was pretty much my week. Cool. That was it, and um, and obviously I was was playing a game. What were you playing? Well, why don't we uh, why don't we wait for the jingle? <sighs> What have you been playing at, you slags? So last week we were without the evil within, but this week we are with the evil within. So nice. I see what I, you did uh, there. <laughs> I got my reviewing shoes on, mm-hmm. and uh, I bloody well, I bloody well went and played it. See, that's funny because I have a reviewing hat, but you yeah. have shoes. I've got yeah because it, I do like a little funny walk to the computer, oh, like okay. a little yeah. like a little step. You know, like in a, in a film to show that someone's happy, mm-hmm. they'd like do a little close up and they'd do like a little half step. Okay, cool. That's like what I do when I go to uh, reviews, my review step. And when you finish the game, you do like one of those jump and click your feet together? No, I just do like a little spin. I like start okay. to, I, I start, I take a step backwards and then just do like a heel spin. Okay. And cool. just point at myself in the mirror. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, touch my groin. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I take my hat off and throw it in a kind of Michael Jackson type way. Yeah, it was, I would say the whole thing was getting pretty Michael Jackson then. <laughs> I, I usually do that and then just. Go like this. <laughs> well, you can't see what I did, but yeah. it was very Michael Jackson esque. It was, apart from the beard, which I never saw Michael Jackson with. Although I saw him with stubble once, and he looked like a fucking car wreck. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get used to it. I was like, he should never, he shouldn't have stubble. He's always his chin was always like marbly. You wouldn't expect him to have any stand up with stubble. Well, his, his chin was always genuine shape. You know what I mean? It was like he's probably. I feel really bad for him. Remember yeah, that? What was that Michael Jackson game? Moon, Moon something. Moonwalker. Moonwalker. Lo- we need to do. We need to do a, a playthrough. That was a. I loved that game. Yeah. I must have pumped like twelve quid into that in Blackpool. You could throw Tower. your hat, can you? And that, that was yeah. like a weapon. Like I was playing it with my cousin at Blackpool Tower on the arcade, right? And we fucking just pumped money. After. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I I was so into that game, and you nice. could like one of the special moves was you could fucking all these gangsters would be coming after you, and you could like start the moonwalk dance and they would all start dancing and then they would like do that lean and everything cool and then at the end they'd all just like die you know what I mean and they'd be like oh, and they'd just go and just die why was there a Michael Jackson video game that's just weird why was there a Michael Jackson film you know what I mean with Joe Pesci in it of all people can you imagine that like now who would be the equivalent do you think Justin Bieber nah like I don't know I don't think there is an equivalent I, I don't think you can cause like you can't just go on his music. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because there's a lot of stuff that's obviously influenced by him, but, like, the, the character of Michael Jackson... It's just unique. But... Yeah, you can't... You're never going to get near that again, yeah. I don't think. Yeah. So, anyway... What have you been playing? The Evil Within. Cool. Uh, I've been reading some other reviews on it because I, I am aware that, like... Because, obviously, last week we were supposed to have it and we didn't. German Post. Indeed. And, um... Yeah, and then, so, you know, I was looking at a lot of... Uh, you know reviews and most people gave it a pretty bad rap I thought okay you know so when I started to play it it's uh, let, let's kind of break it down mm-hmm. you start off uh, and you're on a call you're basically driving somewhere with your kind of cop friends and so, uh, so you're a cop you're a cop okay. yeah and you're driving somewhere with your cop friends and this call comes in and uh, actually at one point they do establish it's a cop car but the driver He's sort of like idly chatting as though he's a cab driver. And whilst I was watching the cutscene, I actually forgot they were cops and I thought they were just three people in a cab. I was like, this is really weird. They just, you know what I mean? It was really like that. Like all of them are talking about cop stuff and the driver just seems like completely uninformed about everything. He's just like, so good weather we're having today, huh? You know what I mean? I was like, what's this dude about? Anyway. It, it cuts again and there's only one in the front and two guys in the back as if it actually is a taxi. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> you get to the hospital you go in and uh, it's all gross there's fucking blood everywhere and you find 
a doctor do that's like sorry still... to keep interrupting but what kind of time like is this modern day or I think I don't actually know but I think according to the uh, some clues I found during the game mm-hmm. I think it's set in like 2004 or something it's a strange date to pick yeah it is in. yeah I don't, I don't know why maybe there'll be a Maybe there'll a be like, for it. yeah, maybe there'll be, but I don't know. But you keep finding these little diary type entry things, and they're all oh. dated 2004. So, okay. So yeah. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, you, you get to the hospital, and then you're sort of you're you're looking at some security monitors, mm-hmm. and you see this sort of weird ghosty dude like zapping, you know, kind of like appearing in front of security guard, kind of teleporting and killing them, and he's like, "What the fuck?" And then. He turns around and bam, it's there. It gets him and he's out cold. And then you go into the the sort of the preamble, you know, like the the, the the bit before the game. You don't know that. You think, right, I'm straight into the game. And you're kind of hanging upside down there and there's this sort of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, mask face, big dude, like just pulling a guy off a hook next to you and taking him and chopping him up. And uh, the whole the whole bit is just uncomfortable you know Mm -hmm. it's just fucking blood everywhere and it's just weird and uh, as everybody else has said you got this fucking letterbox that just seems to clip off the exact bits of the screen that you really want to be seeing you know what I mean is is that on purpose by them or is it well they they said that they did it to get like a more cinematic feel okay and I think and everybody else says that I think they did it to squeeze every last bit of performance out of the consoles that they could. Okay. And then they thought, well, we can't make it full screen for the PC now because everyone will kick off. Right. Or whatever. So, uh, so yeah, we've got this, this, this ultra letterbox, which is fine. You know, it's okay, but it, it does start to piss you off after a little bit. And especially with this first, this first level, there's a lot of kind of, um, you know, you, you're, you're constantly stealthing around and trying to, Basically, this this you get away from this guy and he comes after you, you know, and uh, you have to hide in a in a fucking locker and he kind of goes past and then you have to try and walk past him while he's in a room and it, it's it's very I, I was I fell out with it so I mean I spoke to you on, uh, via text and I said like I'm fucking sick of this yeah and I haven't even played I haven't even played past the first level you know I was so sick of it so it's got a kind of a high barrier barrier for entry, but not necessarily in like a difficult way, but more in like kind of an annoyance. It's very, way. it's very frustrating and yeah. clunky, and you, you you're not really. I think if if that level would have come up later, you'd have been okay because like you know I hated the controls to start with because the the camera isn't really bound to the player in the way that it normally is. Like normally you kind of float behind the player, right? But with this. You're you're moving your player with the left uh, directional stick, and then the camera moves around with the right one. So you can you can move the camera to be alongside him and leave it there, or you can put it in front of him or behind him and it'll stay there. Oh, so this is a third person? Yeah, it's third. Okay. It's, oh, yeah, sorry, a yeah, third person. But you can move the camera around as much as you like, and it will ne- it won't sort of snap back to that rear position. Oh, okay. it will just stay where you've put it. Why do you think they did that? I don't know why they did it, but. I didn't. I hated it when I started playing the game. I absolutely just. I was like, "Oh, this is terrible," you know. Like you kind of the 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 whole stealth thing. For instance, in GTA, if you're stealthing, then you can sneak and you'll sort of stick to a wall, mm-hmm. and you can shuffle along to the edge and kind of peep around. And there's none of that, you know. You can't just sort of pin yourself against the wall. You just kind of sneak up to it and he kind of gingerly puts his hand on it, and that's a that's it. There's none of this sort of like peep buttons or anything okay. so the, the sneak feels a little bit lacking you're like ah, it's not really what I want you know you want because a lot of the game is stealth you want a really good stealth system you want him to be taking cover and using cover properly but you don't feel like that's the case okay. you just feel like I'll roughly get him into this shadow and he'll probably be okay you know that's strange when it's when it's surely a game that relies so much on stealth then you would think they would. it does rely a lot on stealth and especially in that first part but this is sort of the this is what I'm trying to get to. The whole feel of the game started out as just or horrific in not just in, in in what the game was about, but the controls, the the look. I was I was sick of it. I was bored of it within minutes, and I was just like, oh, I can't, I can't do this. I, I must have rage quit like six or seven times. That's a good know? way to start a game, though. Make sure make everyone annoyed. Yeah, and I mean, no one to continue. That, I think <laughs> that, that's the, that's the whole thing. But then eventually, I, I came to it the once, and I thought, okay, I'm gonna fucking do this. 
and I went in and I, I just I won't tell people what I did but I, I made my mind up what I was going to do and I did it and it worked exactly I didn't get killed fucking onto the next level you know and you run down a corridor and then you get trapped in this thing and there's like a big threshing machine in a sanitarium for some reason okay. and then you fall into this vat of blood and eventually eventually you get into a lift up you go and then you're out of the hospital you've escaped and I was like oh I didn't expect that and then cut scene again I don't want to go into too much because I don't want to I don't really want to spoil it you know but um, but it suddenly picked up for me. The, the storyline suddenly took a twist I didn't expect right at the beginning. Okay. And, um, you know, everything everything changed. The, the, what I thought the game was about, it wasn't. It, it, everything was changed, and suddenly I was in, like, a sort of forest area. It wasn't so claustrophobic, but it was still... You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The area's open, but so you would think you would get that feeling of openness, but it still feels closed in, but in a good way. You're like... You know what I mean? You're like, yeah. oh, there's... It, it, it started to get really clever and the more I used it in this big space then because like in, in, in the host, in the hospital when you're trying to move the camera around it's always like up against the wall so you can't quite move where Different, you want to be yeah. when you're in the open you start getting the hang of the camera then you know like you're moving the camera around and you're using it and you know like you get those sort of tutorials as you go along how to melee how to shoot all this sort of bullshit but I really started enjoying the game then, you know, because I was sort of felt a bit freer. How do you think they managed <coughs> to like? Obviously, with kind of survival horrors, a lot of the time you're kind of stuck somewhere, like uh, Alien Isolation. You're on the ship. Yeah. Resident Evil. You're usually in the building. How did they manage to get that kind of feeling of foreboding across, despite the fact you were in the middle of a forest? What What did they do to kind of make you feel well, kind you, of restricted? You kind of you're walled in, you know. You it's sort of like canyony in okay. a way. And uh, you can't just fuck off wherever you want. There's a, there is a route you're taking, you know. Mm-hmm. And you you can see then in the distance like a blurry light, which you tend to head for. Okay. And as you get closer, it's, you know, a camp or whatever it is. Um, and yeah, you, you know, you start meeting more of the enemies then. And there's that, I mean, they're varied enough as well. They're not sort of, you know, this one type of enemy. Um, and they all look the same, you know. Mm-hmm. They're all... They're all quite varied. I didn't. I didn't ever notice that I was battling the same thing twice. Okay. You know, you got like you got like they're the same, essentially AI, but it's a it, it looks different, mm-hmm. and maybe they've got a slightly different movement animation. But the, you know, what I mean, it's the same enemy. You know, do you know what I'm getting? Yeah, at there? yeah. But like, you you don't get bored of seeing the same thing over and over and over again. There's always something weird and twisted about these things that's happening. What time? And what, what time of day are you going through the, it's the a, forest? It's, it's at night, obviously. You know, it's it's all at night, um, and so you've got you've got like this little lantern that you hold out in front of him, like fucking Florence Nightingale, <laughs> <clears throat> and that makes it quite creepy as well. You know. But one of the annoying things is um, the, the the enemies. They did that thing where they start. They're they're predictable, you know. They they follow patrol paths, and you you literally sit there and you're like, right, I'll wait for them to fucking do this, and then I can creep around, which is which is cool. But like, you get really bored of that, you know. Yeah, there was uh, a great article in the Onion uh, last week or the week before. It was uh, a guy basically saying. I've been told by my boss I need to walk up and down this uh, bit of uh, corridor the exact same way all day. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is obviously going for that kind of yeah, video that, game. that whole thing. <laughs> yeah, I need to walk up here, round the corner a little bit, stop just in the doorway, mm-hmm. look around and then go back again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, that, that, that's how it got. It's like, oh no, they're doing the same thing over and over and over again. But if as soon as they see you, they do get really unpredictable. They will start running straight at you. Yeah. But you know, They'll, they'll sometimes run away you didn't expect and you're like oh fuck me they're, they're coming around a different way so in that early stage at the forest the, the, the enemies are coming running at you what kind of what do you have to defend yourself well you pick up a gun right. that's the first weapon you really have is a gun you pick that up um, well it's not strictly true you've got a knife from somewhere I guess because it's a cop and you can do like sort of sneak kills mm-hmm. and you, you, you know you sort of kill this one dude you take him down and he was the cop that was driving you in the first place, the taxi driver. It's him that you you basically meet. Is the first enemy you come across. So he's been transformed. Yeah, he's been turned into the. They're, they're sort of zombies. Sort of. They're a cross between uh, a zombie, um, some kind of leper, 
and a Cenobite from Hellraiser. A leper, not a leopard? A, yeah, a leper, okay. not a leopard. Right. Um, but yeah, so you get, and they've got sort of, some of them have got like these weird giant pencils sticking out of them. Some of them are kind of run through with pipes all over. I've seen ones that are like kind of glass shards all stuck into them. Some with just fucking tendrils and shit coming out of them. Nice. Like Really, and they, the noises are so creepy that they make, you know, they are... They are pretty good, but what I was trying to say is when you have, you know, as as it starts to lay on thicker and thicker and you come across more and more of them, you know, you start to develop your play style. Are you going to be like gung ho running and shoot? Are you going to be a stealth guy? Are you going to, you know, like you start to develop your style mm-hmm. and depending on what it is, you know, you start making use of beds, cupboards, you can hide and you can hide under beds. So if you run into a room and, and get under the bed real quick, then if one of the enemies comes in, they'll sort of look around and you, all you can see is like their feet, you know? Damn so there's that whole time you're thinking, oh fuck, are they going to like, are they going to look down and get me? Do, 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 they ever, do they ever look down? I don't know. I, it hasn't happened to me. I've only hidden under a bed effectively twice. Okay. You know, uh, the, the first time I did it, I got, I got in and then accidentally pressed the button and got straight out again. I was like, oh no. But, uh, but yeah, it's creepy, you know, and then you can get into cupboards, any sort of like peeps, <coughs> out through like the little slats okay <coughs> so that's like that's quite a nice little feature which is it's kind of amnesia-ish mm-hmm. you know what I mean you've got all of that sort of thing um, but the other thing about the enemies they are tough they don't just go down with one unless you can sneak kill them they're not going down with one you, you, you can shoot them in the head a couple of times maybe they'll go down if you may leave them you're going to be having a scrap for ages you know okay. what I mean so they are, I, but I played it on the standard setting it's the highest setting you get to start with and then I think once you complete it on that you can go back and play it on an even harder setting right so uh, so so I got you know I got to the point where I was thinking fuck these guys are actually hard to kill mm-hmm. so yeah I started thinking like this is actually pretty cool you know it's, it's nice and balanced you do feel like when you get or I felt like when I got through a level like I just scraped through, you know. So you were saying that it's uh, not really receiving uh, favourable reviews from uh, elsewhere. What do, do you know? What they've said that's annoyed them, and can you address what they've said that's annoyed them? Well, I think I think. Well, actually, you told me that someone had said something because I said it to you. Yeah. Was there's certain times where you'll see, you know, you'll see a guy and he's got like um, got like a. a is sort of walking around with a, like a wooden torch, you know? Okay. And uh, you're taken down and his torch is there. So you're like, great, I'll fucking, you know, I'll take the torch. I can see shit and I can smack people with it. Mm-hmm. And um, there's, this, there's this whole mechanic they've got where when you kill someone, you can burn the body. And I don't know what the point is of it because they don't come back to life when they're dead. So... You're just sort of wasting matches for no apparent reason on dead bodies. Okay. Um, but then when you've got the torch, I, I sort of thought, why can't I set people on fire with the torch <laughs> instead of wasting a match? Because I've got, it's a big flat. It's like a huge match. So why can't I just use that? <laughs> but he won't. You have to use the fucking matches still. And I was like, it, it's them details for me that like it's like they spent so long and the graphics look really gorgeous, you know, in a sort of very sick demented way mm-hmm. but they're really nice and you saw the little bit that we played yep you got all that sort of floating dust in the air yeah. and it's it's got a real fucking sense of like kind of foreboding it's really it's a really you know it's really well put together visually and then you get a little thing like that and you just like what the fuck man it just pulls you over the game yeah you just yeah. like ah, oh, oh, ah, yeah. fuck and there's you know there's, there's dudes roaming around with like uh, one guy had an axe. No, I found an axe in a wall, and I took that out, and I was like, "Fuck yeah, I've got an axe. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna split some heads." So I'm, I'm out there, you know, and I'm fucking. Wah. And then you meet some dude, and he, and he's got like a, a fucking pickaxe, and you're like, "Mint! I can, I can now get a pickaxe." So you slam the fucking axe into this dude's head. He dies. You've lost your axe because you can only use it on one person. And then you go to pick up the pickaxe, and it's just not there. It isn't there. You're like, well. He just had a pickaxe. Where did he go? I didn't burn him or the pickaxe, and the pickaxe isn't there. There's um, guys with hose, like, like I mean, no, uh, no prostitutes. Yeah, like I mean, an actual hoe which you would use in the garden. Yeah. There's um, there's people with like machetes, and and you're like, oh fuck yeah, I could kill him. I'd love a machete. Not there. Kill the guy who got a rifle. Rifle wasn't there. 
Fuck. You know what I mean? It's like I, I hate it. Like I was playing a, a wee bit uh, Alien Isolation again uh, after last week. Yeah, and there's a bit where there's like a platform. The platform's maybe like two foot high, and then there's a small like three stairs, and then the platform again. So like that, the stairs are in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like you're running away from uh, androids, you can't just step up the platform. You have to go up the wee stairs. Oh. and it's just like. If you're running away from something, you, you would not like take the time to step up all these stairs. You would just freaking launch over the whole thing. Yeah, exactly. You would just fucking dive over. Yeah, it and it's just like to. it feels like sometimes a game just puts a, a hand out, slaps you in the face, and says, "This is a video game. This is a video game." Yeah, and that kind of reminds me of what you're talking about there. <laughs> I think that's the thing. Like, I think, I mean, we're seeing. Well, I feel like we see less and less of that. Mm. You know, like because in the old days, you got like uh, games that tried to represent an open world. But, you know, we just didn't have the, the, the resources then to do that shit. So, you, do you remember those things where you'd, like, you'd walk down a road and you just couldn't walk any further? Yeah. And it would, you'd be like, oh, no, this, this fucking sucks, man. And you'd walk into water and then you'd die from walking into yeah, water. I mean, but yeah, but even Red Dead Redemption <laughs> did that, and that's yeah. not that long ago. So, yeah. things like that now, and we're, they're starting to get rid of that. Look, slowly but surely, they're coming up with different ways of, you know, like... Like, I think um, Assassin's Creed does a really good job yeah. of explaining why you can't go beyond the game world things you know people are coming up with better explanations and mm-hmm. it kind of feels like a thing but like yeah for for such a good looking game i just i just was gutted that these things there's a bit where i, I, I kill eventually you you come up against this uh this chainsaw bastard and um you know you take him down and then make a big deal. This chainsaw is just sitting there on the floor, like, and there's like a fucking shaft of light. Then mm-hmm. you're just like, oh, a fucking chainsaw. Like, I was like back in like I was back in my 17 year old head, like when I was playing Doom, running around with that chainsaw, and uh, I picked it up, and it wasn't available as a weapon. Jeez. It just said like item of interest or something like that. It's like it's just a picture of it, and I'm like, no, <laughs> no, I want to use the I want to use the fucking chainsaw. And you can't until. You go to open the, this gate to get out, and he just fucking pulls the chainsaw out, chops through a chain, and then and and that's it. Then it presumably throws it away because you don't have it anymore. So it's like all these fucking enemies are coming at me, but I'll just use this chainsaw to open gates. Yeah, pretty much. And it, and I was just like, man, like they could have, you know, he could have chopped through the thing, and maybe like the chain broke snaps. or something. Yeah, maybe yeah. The, maybe the chain comes off or it fucking dies or runs out of fuel and just goes, oh fucking forget it. Yeah, they could have they could have dressed it up to. It's things like that. Like they've taken so much time and everything else. The sound design is fucking brilliant. Yeah. I love the sound in the game. I'm just going to refer to my notes here. That was just making sure I'm hitting all the all the things I wanted to talk about. Um, yeah, the the uh, the whole feeling of it, like it doesn't remind me of Bioshock. But it's got that same level of uh, of kind of immersion and like they really went all out to create the world with this feeling, you know, like they didn't they didn't leave anything out. They really tried to get everything in that would sell this as this world, Mm -hmm. you know, Uh, except the little polishes. Um, The other thing I was going to say about the uh, the bad guys, I did mention one of them had a rifle. They're not quite mindless zombies. They do have rifles and they do fucking shoot at you. So every now and again, you'll have some sniper guy uh, taking a pot shot at you, and you and you and you because you, 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 you get into the mindset that these are zombies and they're not. So is, has there been any explanation about what is happening? Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of exposition. There's a, there's a, um, a bit of a, um, an experiment to do with synchronizing brain waves, mm-hmm. and all of the people in the experiment start to go mad, and the one guy, I, I think, I don't really know yet I, I think my, either I've missed a really important plot element or they haven't <laughs> said anything yet I think he's like the main guy who was running the experiment he's somehow unaffected he doesn't go mad but all the rest of them do and then from that he gets this power and he starts fucking with you basically mm-hmm. and the city at large so he's the main bad guy he's this sort of weird hooded um, I, can't, I can't even remember how I described him now he's sort of he kind of buzzes in and out of uh, existence, kind of like the um, uh, what do you call it? The the the, the shining, uh, not the shining, the ring. Yeah, that oh, sort of course. weird kind yeah. of like on TV Shimmering interference, sort of sort of malarkey. That's 
that's that's him and he doesn't you don't ever, when you see him you don't go like oh shit it's not like pyramid head in in fucking uh, silent hill mm-hmm. you don't you don't see him and you're just filled with dread it's like you see him and you're like oh it's this fucking dickhead again what's he going to do now you know <laughs> he's going to he's going to put you in another predicament that you've got to get out of you know like i've, I've been he appears and just just fucks with you you know i just sometimes think well just if you can appear anywhere, just appear behind me and kill me. Yeah. And it would be job done. Like, what are you doing all this for? He obviously enjoys the sport. Yeah, he's, he's getting off on it. He's a, he's a, he's a prick, basically. <laughs> he's a jerk. I don't like the guy, and I'm not scared to say it. <laughs> so, um, so there's him, and, and I don't really understand. What about, like, the, the, the gameplay and stuff? Like, does it feel good, it, like, <laughs> action-wise? I mean, is it good to... So it's sort of the the melee combat is a little bit. In fact, it's extremely predictable. You can definitely get in two hits on the bad guys before they try and hit you back. Right. You know, and you have to go smack, smack, run away, and then kind of run around in circles, smack, smack, run away. If you've got a gun, maybe you can turn around and get a pot shot in. Mm-hmm. Mm, a couple of shots, three shots to the head usually takes them down. Or, as I said, Malik, um, a sneak kill. Mm-hmm. If you've got a shotgun, sometimes if you get really close, you can pop them. So his shotgun, so is like ammo hard to come by? Ammo is super hard to come by. It's extremely rare. Um, like, you'll find what looks like a box of shotgun shells, and it's one or two. <laughs> you know what I mean? The, the, the actual, the, the, the sort of the model that you see for the shotgun shells is like three shotgun shells alongside a box. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, great, shotgun shells, one! <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Nice. <laughs> Why is there just one in there? But my favourite thing of the whole game so far is the the way they have the level-up system. The way you can level up in the game is... Uh, it's just fucking great, man. It's so inventive. They don't want you saving every five minutes, so there's no... You can't just save the game whenever you want, okay. you know? <laughs> so you have to... You have to complete checkpoints, get to the end of the level, and every now and again, you'll hear this music, sort of ghostly music coming from somewhere. Okay. And when you hear it, it's just you're just like, oh, brilliant! It's I can that's where I can save my game. So you kind of gravitate towards this, and in the room that the music's coming from, will be like a mirror on the wall, and there'll probably be a couple of items in there that are like plot elements and things. Mm-hmm. So you sort of like story. Um, and, and once, and once you've picked up everything you need to from that room the mirror will kind of crack open and there's this bright light behind it. And uh, you go and press A and hold it down. And he kind of transports through the mirror into, I guess, his mind. I call it a mental hospital. Oh, you see what I mean? It's uh, like a hospital in his mind. Yeah, yeah. So uh, because, <laughs> because mental hospital is an actual thing as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then you've made it like mental in your head. Yeah. And a hospital. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's like it's like on so many levels. Man. Yeah, yeah. So um, so yeah, and there's like this mysterious nurse in there who's kind of like a guide. Um, and yeah, in, in this little hospital bit, you can save your game in there. You can um, there's there's like a notice board and little bits pop up on there. Sometimes you can pick up. There's a newspaper stand, mm-hmm. and you kind of you know every time you're in there, something news there. You can collect a new bit of story you know and does that does that have a kind of dream like quality about it or yeah it's sort of it it drops into into like a sort of very desaturated um film grain there's a lot of film grain on there okay um and it's all very it's all very dirty but it's got that sort of old rundown clinical feel you know um and you basically go plug yourself into this electric chair and that's this, this machine comes down onto your head and um, then you can choose your power-ups. And the currency is this green goo, which you find in jars. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Again, I think I might have missed an important plot. <laughs> I was playing it at like three o'clock this morning. Okay. <clears throat> after a hard day. So, yeah, so there's this green goo that's your currency, you know, and you, you collect that. Uh, and then you can use it to like the, 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 the standard shit, you know, like make first aid packs heal you better increase okay. your health bar uh stamina mm-hmm. and then you you can like weapons mods so you can fit more ammo in or you can have uh damage multipliers um specific different types of bolts for the crossbow that you can get mm-hmm. there's all sorts of different little things you can do which is great um but sort of lacking a little bit you know it's like they've tried to put that rpg element in there 
but it's more like a token gesture. It's very, a lot of it sounds like Alien <laughs> Isolation. A lot of it, because that's got the kind of RPG stuff in it as well. Yeah, it's and it's, but you sort of feel like, oh, is this, you know, could I, do, do we need this? Yeah. You know what I mean? You could just literally just have a general level. I don't know. I mean, people like that stuff. I, I like it as well. Even when even I'm dissing it, it's, it's quite cool. So if you, like, if you were to describe where your save game is at just now, if you were to describe everything about, like, try and create a picture for the, for the listener, what are you seeing when you start your game up again? What is going on, going on around you? Okay. Um, I'm trying to remember, actually. I only just, <laughs> only just put the thing down. Uh, in a, in, back in another hospital, um, it's, it looks like uh, the hospital from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Okay. Where someone painted the walls with blood and guts. Okay. And there are there's the odd sort of um, uh, puddle of blood, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just just there, or you you might walk into a room that's that's sort of knee deep with blood. Sometimes mm-hmm. um, there's a lot of uh, the, those sort of drip holder things on wheels and little kind of surgical trolleys, beds, kind of just strewn around different corridors. And there's crap and balls on the floor and. You know, there's there's a lot going on in there. A lot of lights flashing. It's very moody. Mm-hmm. And with that with that lantern, I mean, the use of shadows in the game is you pointed out as well. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Sometimes your own shadow will scare the shit out of you. You know, <laughs> and it happened to it happened to me earlier on. You like you turn around, and you think, "What the fuck? It's my fucking shadow." <laughs> you know. So, <coughs> so there's there, there's all of that, and. I, I'm just really pleased that when I started playing it, I really didn't like it. I didn't. I didn't want to play. I wasn't enjoying it, and I stuck with it. And I, I'm really enjoying it now. I'm, I'm actually. I'm, I'm starting to get invested in the story. Some elements of it still really piss me off. Um, I'm still sort of making sense of some of the controls sometimes. I don't know. You know, like I think something that, that that's annoying is when I want to change my weapons. I'm always still in, Santa, in in GTA mode. Okay. So I keep going for the wrong buttons and things like that. Mm-hmm. I wish developers would talk to each other <laughs> and say, "This is how we're going to do it." Get the know? same controls. Yeah, let's yeah. just let's just stick with this because this works. <laughs> um. So that's all of that. The what else was there? Da, 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 da. Oh, the first time you see a transformation. I wanted to discuss this earlier. The there's this brilliant bit where you you're just in the game and you're you come out of the hospital and you're walking through the forest and you, you break from the forest a little and it's kind of like, I guess it's a lake or a river, a wide river. And on the other side of it is like, um, it looks like the, the, the hospital you went into in the first place in the city, except it's on the other side of a lake and it's just in a sort of rural area. And at the very spike of it at the top, there's like a lighthouse light going around. And um, it looks really nice. You know, they've done it really well. But when that light kind of goes across, there's a guy that comes running out of a house and you start talking to him and as the light from this lighthouse comes around onto him, he starts freaking out and these sort of tendrils of blood shoot out and start going around him. And then as the light kind of moves off of him, <clears throat> they turn into barbed wire that sort of all encircled him that all suddenly tightens up and kind of like pulls around. So it's kind of like a saw yeah. wire, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it kind of wraps around. So it's like now he's got all this barbed wire sort of twisted and embedded into his face and arms and legs and shit and oh it's fantastic it's really just it's so gruesome but I fucking loved it I was super nice. into it it's a really really well put together and somehow really satisfying to watch you know you can't help being like oh I, I want to watch that again that was fucking badass so there's, there's, all, there's all sorts of little touches I just think the whole game is let down on these stupid little gamey things yeah the, the, the little gamey things that's, that's the that's the thing and the I, I, I actually call I'm just reading out what my actual words were the crap the, it's the crap um, uh, enemy in it it's the I call it the mysterious interference on the TV screen ghost made of cockroaches type dude you know what I mean he's <laughs> It's just like you see him, and you just like you just look just look like a dude with a hood on. You know, <laughs> he, he could have he could have just walked out of some kind of goth club somewhere, you yeah. Know? But it's sort of a white thing, so maybe he's like an alternative goth, <laughs> anti goth. Yeah, uh, but yeah, that's it. I, I, I gen- generally thought it was a cool game. I'm, I'm into it now, <clears throat> and I think um, I think if people are if people are on the fence about it, um, 
you know, if you can get a good deal on the game, then then, then go and get it. Mm-hmm. But uh, if you're if you're expecting something, oh, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out who to warn away from it. You yeah. know, it's it's really hard. If if survival and horror isn't really your thing, you I don't think you it's got anything new that's going to make you enjoy it. You yeah. Know? I don't think this game is doing something that nothing has ever done before. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Are you, are you going to review it for the site? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do a 10 minute review cool. uh, and throw that up on there on my blog. Um, but uh, essentially, it's, it's going to be what I've written here with a little cool. bit more polish. Cool. But, and, um, and if you didn't, if you weren't going to have to play on for review, would you would you play on anyway? I would, yeah. I actually want to play it now. Cool. That's, that's the thing. It's, it's like... Uh, I, I'm trying to find the words that I said there. Um, yeah, it's a rage quit, get halfway through a cigarette and stub it out to play again kind of game. Okay. You know what I mean? You're like, fuck this, I'm going to have a cigarette. And then halfway through, you're like, oh, fuck, oh, I've got <laughs> to do it. You know what I mean? It's like, just keeps pulling you back in. Maybe if you hadn't written your notes in such small ink, you would have been able to find that quicker. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. But, you know, it's, it's one-upmanship. Because <laughs> you, you've, been, you've been scribbling your stuff down on these little 80s things and I thought what I would do is print mine out onto A4 un- onto A4 80s paper <laughs> which, is, which is great but uh, what I could have done was put some bullet points that would have been yeah. maybe see, but see uh, I've, out, points, I've yeah. outsmarted myself yeah. <laughs> so yeah so that was that I, I enjoy, I'm enjoying it and I think cool. if you if you think you want it then you probably do so go get it cool yeah cool. Right, so that takes us on to what I've been playing I've been playing Borderlands uh, pre-sequel yeah so I got that on the uh, PlayStation 3. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If you like Borderlands, you'll like this game. Yeah. Basically. It's pretty, pretty much it. Yeah, I mean, I could, like... If if you want to skip the next uh, 10 minutes or so, then you, you probably... That's all you need. Uh, Is it just like Borderlands, but it's like with some space? But it's... Basically, it's it's made from by different people. It's been given to 2K Australia... Okay. Uh, and it's using Gearbox software instead of actually being made by Gearbox. Ah, okay. So it's kind of like, you know, when uh, you had the two Arkham games and then Arkham City came out and that was made by not the right people? Yeah. This is kind of like that. Okay. Uh, it looks it looks like Borderlands. It's got the same kind of cartoony style. Uh, you're following... So it's after the first game... But before the second game, that's why it's called the pre-sequel. The pre-sequel, yeah, yeah. okay. So you're following kind of uh, Handsome Jack, who was a character from Borderlands 2, watching his descent into being like a villain. Ah, okay, so okay cool. He's alright at the start and then he becomes a villain. Uh, you play as one of four playable characters who have already been in the game <laughs> before. So maybe in the other games there were like uh, NPGs or enemies yeah. and now they're one, they're one of the people you can play like um, Wilhelm who was one, I think the second baddie second boss in uh, Borderlands 2 so now you can play as him ah oh, ok cool so you you can play as Athena who's a gladiator she has a ability to have a temporary shield so she can get a shield going up yeah that'll last for like 30 seconds or whatever or 10 maybe not 30 seconds 10 20 seconds and then she has to regenerate that again until she can use it, before she can use it again. Next one you can go as Nisha, who's the lawbringer. So she's like a kind of western, uh, western sheriff, <laughs> like a gunslinger. Yeah, she's like a gunslinger. I fucking love gunslinger. Shit. Yeah. So she's for a short time, she can increase her damage and her speed. Uh, as I said, Wilhelm, who's the enforcer, he uh, is moving more towards being like a kind of. Android, the kind of Android type thing that he was in Borderlands 2. Yeah. And this is more human and he's moving towards being Android, like adding things to himself. Okay. Like metal yeah, yeah. things. And the metal last. Metal things. Metal things. Oh, is it mental things? No, it's pure mental. Yeah. Now, the last one is Claptrap, who is the little robot. I know, yeah, everyone knows who Claptrap is. Yeah, the little annoying yeah. who's dancing all the time. And <laughs> somehow manages to balance on one fucking wheel. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. So, he's got a cool thing that I'll talk about later, when, when one of the points I'm going to make. He also takes... So, when a situation comes up, his kind of special thing is that he will look at all the kind of characters that we have. Yeah. And I think I think all the characters have ever been in Borderlands, and he can put together the best kind of skill to use for that situation. Ah, okay. So, despite the fact that he's like a little, little shitty machine, he's got kind of... It's a really cool skill that he's got. He can basically adapt... 
to other people's skills. Yeah, ah. and he gets like he creates like, little other um, clap traps. I've got like little, I don't know, like cowboy hats and stuff. And it's kind of they're going for the humor of it. Yeah, the, the, but the thing that's the whole. I thought that was the whole point of Borderlands was to be a little bit. Yeah, more, you know. and it's really funny. Like when you're choosing a clap trap, it comes up with another screen. Like really. Yeah. And when you click OK, it's like, are you sure about this? You want to go clap trap? Yeah. And it's got like that kind of humour from the start. So, yeah. Uh, so, getting into the great game, it looks, I mean, both the lines always looks fantastic. I mean, it just looks the same, same way. It's really funny. Like, I know people maybe criticise the kind of humour in it, but to me, I thought it was, Handsome Jack's a funny guy. I, I think he's funny. <laughs> it, it says things like, there's a, there's a, they're putting together this, this android at one point, and uh, he, he says it, it looks like a dumpster uh, covered in sadness. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like little lines like that. It's just I, love the, I love the, uh, I, lo- I love in, um, oh shit, like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, mm-hmm. uh, like um, uh, Marvin in that. Yeah. They're like the sort of, I, I love the idea of, uh, of, of somebody being able to find like this, this such a, dullness in in like something that isn't human but humanize it and then make it even duller than it was to start <laughs> yeah, with yeah. like <laughs> so yeah it's basically full of little lines like that uh but then it goes skirts the line it skirts the line between being really really cool like that and then kind of going a bit too far with things like this character moxie in it and like the entrance to her place is referred to as moxie's back door Okay, yeah, yeah. And it's just like, come on, look, I mean, when would I have found, found that funny? What age would I have had to be? I, I was thinking about this, and remember when I went to college, I was stu- studying journalism. I was 17 years old, and we were doing putting together this magazine, and it was called Bell College, where we were. And at the back of the magazine, we were going to have in little, little purple letters, Bell End. <laughs> And that, yeah. and that was the age I found that kind of thing funny. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I still I find that funny now. It's kind of it's kind of funny, but like, I don't know. In your video game, you, they're obviously making jokes to like attract seventeen year olds, and it's like, yeah. I suppose so. But still, I mean, like I, I, I literally still laugh at place names. <laughs> I try, I, like, like this place is literally called Bell End, where, like where I used to live. You know, what I mean, there's Licky End. Lick it in. Yeah, there's all the. And I still go past and like sort of chortle to myself, it was, which is which is nice. There's one in Germany that I went by. It's called Hard. So it's just the word Hard. <laughs> just pointing it out. And you're like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not yet. I think the the, the the weirdest place name I've ever seen. I went. I drove through a town in the north. Well, the sort of the the north of the middle of Scotland, mm-hmm. and it was just called Keith. Keith. There was a town called Keith. They've got a football team as well. Ah, oh, <laughs> Keith. It's a, just a person's name. It sounds like it's such an English name as this well. This is like you drive through a fucking, you know, like driving through the countryside. Brilliant. We're we gonna stop for dinner. We could stop in Dave. It just, <laughs> it just, it's like why have you, why have you called it Keith? <laughs> like you could, if it was like called like Keith Town. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. or Keith's Town, or fucking, you know what I mean. It would make a bit more sense than just Keith, Jeff, it's like a place called Adam. It's just, you know what I mean? It doesn't make any fucking sense, man. Well, you've got that place named after uh, David Beckhamson in Brooklyn, so. Oh, yeah, I suppose, yeah. No, I thought of that. Now I look like an idiot. <laughs> but so. uh, I think in, in Scotland you've got all these names like Drumna Drocket and Uchtermurchte, and then it's just like somebody who's like, oh, fuck, I can't be bothered making any more Keith, up. Keith. Keith. Yeah. What's what that guy's name over there? Which one? The one with the, the, one with the corduroys? Yeah, Keith. Yeah, just call it Keith. <laughs> Fuck it. Don't care. Yeah. Don't care anymore. He seemed happy working there. <laughs> yeah, building these houses. <laughs> so the, the, it's got the usual things like uh, skill trees, things like that. The characters are all distinct. Uh, so the, the each one of them's got a kind of individual voice, so you don't kind of mistake them. So and I don't mean in like sound of voice. I mean like personality. Yeah, I, know. Yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. Uh, I made a f- I, I fucked up with the skill trees I can really remember my last kind of Borderlands experience so as soon as I was getting skill points I was kind of putting them into one in each area uh, instead of just like concentrating it's, on like yeah one. so I basically spread mine out throughout the whole thing instead of focusing so you were a jack of all trades yeah and I was really bad at everything else yeah like, master of none it was taking me ages to take guys down because I hadn't put it into my kind of gunpowder and stuff yeah. like that so I really fucked that up but uh 
So the thing about it is, it looks as good as old Borderlands. It's got the same humour as old Borderlands, so if you love that, then that you're, it's fucking on. But then they've just added a couple of things that, that bring it down, and they seem so unnecessary, like the oxygen thing. So, because you're, you're on Pandora's moon, you need to get oxygen. So there's little bits where you can get... Do you remember, like, is it Sonic? Is there Sonic at 1 or 2? Where you're underwater and you had to get to the bubbles. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So this is what this is what the whole game. Unless you're inside, this is the whole game. Yeah. You need to run between these bits that are coming up. It's like glowing, where you can go. <gasps> you get the oxygen, and then it starts running down again. I think from like 100 or something. Yeah. And it, it doesn't make. It's never a stage where you're. I've never died in between these. Uh, yeah. But parts. But you, for instance, you can't go off and explore because. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, although. There's never, like, the the backdrop to uh, Borderlands games are usually so immovable anyway, so there's never really that much, but the the system, the game is built on loot, and it kind of stops you searching for loot if you're going to have to run between oxygen tanks, basically. I would say there's either going to be, um, like, a, you know, like an infinite oxygen tank you can get as a perk or something, or the developers couldn't be asked with making an explorable world and had to come up with a way to stop, stop you doing you exploring it. yeah I mean I've completed the game and nothing like that has come up so I don't know but it just feels like it's added absolutely nothing to the game it didn't add anything in tension it didn't add anything in whatever they were aiming for and it's just taken things away what if you claptrap that's what I was going to talk about remember when I said claptrap has a useful skill yeah. If you're claptrap, then you don't need to do it. Ah, you see. So they're trying to, g- I guess they'll try to give you the benefit of being claptrap. Yeah. So, uh, but I was, uh, I went to the, the girl Athena. Yeah. Did I say Athena? Is that what I said? Yeah, Athena. Uh, so that's who I went. So I was having to go between the oxygen things. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. That sounds like a really sucky mechanic. And also because you're on the moon, when you jump, you basically float into space for a little while yeah. and come back down. So it's got kind of, interesting things where you can jump into the air and you're shooting people but it also gets kind of annoying because there's this this guy had a jetpack and I'm trying it's a, one of the first boss battles it took me fucking ages because I couldn't ever find him I'm jumping in one direction I can't control myself he's jumped in another oh and I'm you're like oh this guy's all over there and at the same time my oxygen is running down so I'm having to get back down to an oxygen get thing oxygen shoot the dude and it's just like oh, fuck me yeah and even when you've got like the little kind of uh normal enemies they're jumping in all directions you're trying to shoot them they're floating across the screen you're trying to shoot them as I told you before I'm not the best first person shooter I'm just just like taking ages to kill one guy I'm just like stay on the ground so I can shoot you yeah stop stop jumping around yeah Yeah. it gets to me it's annoying but (coughs) I can see they they probably thought it was going to be a fun thing but they don't really do many fun things with it yeah, so it's it's fun at first. You're like, oh, this is fun. Yeah, and then you're like, oh, this is really impractical. Yeah, it's really it's making me hard to do. It's get, on phone, to do get on the phone, Brian. Get on the phone. Just tell him to say get fix this. Get a patch released. Let's get it fixed, guys. Yeah. Let's get some on the map. I know a guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, let's let's bloody well make a make a proper game. It's a shame. I mean, obviously, I think. This is maybe a stopgap before Borderlands 3 comes out, so maybe they're putting the full weight again with that. Yeah. But the thing about it is, what I've noticed is, I don't like Borderlands that much. Like, the comedy is really good, it looks beautiful, but the shooting mechanics are just. I think maybe because I've been playing so much of Destiny and that feels fucking awesome. Yeah, that's, I find that when I play the game, especially when I'm playing Armour. Yeah. You know? And. It's so it's it's so fucking intense, you know. Especially if you've got like the uh, the the ace weapons thing that makes all the all the all the ballistics super realistic. Yeah. If you're playing with that, when you play anything else, it just feels like it feels like Duplo yeah. to your Lego, you know. Yeah. Everything is so cumbersome and shit, and you're like, oh god, this yeah, I remember this. Yeah. You know. It's just there's no real weight in the weapons. It doesn't feel as if. It doesn't feel as if your, your bullets are making contact. It just, I don't know, it, it just doesn't, it's not a very good shooter. It's good at other things, but it's not good at being a good shooter, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of problematic if you're not that invested in the, the, the Borderlands world. 
It's got too much loot as well. So basically there's loot fucking everywhere. You're constantly opening things to get loot. And you're getting like one dollar at a time. Yeah. So you open a wee safe, you get a dollar, and then you go over here and open another safe and get a dollar. And you're it's like, just like, oh. come on. And you get, apparently, like, I think it's like a million gun variations in it. And I would say 999,999 of them are fucking bullshit. Like, I went through most of the game, two thirds of the game, I didn't have a gun that I enjoyed. Yeah. I was just like, come on, fuck. I need, I need something that's. All I wanted basically was a good auto rifle. You know, yeah, it's just like a good it. machine gun. Yeah. And if I'd just got that, I would have kept that. I wouldn't have cared with everything else, but. Yeah, they've added some things from other Borderlands games. You can now the, the lasers, which is what the gun that I ended up using was a laser gun. Yeah, that was kind of cool, but again, didn't have a very good feeling behind it. They've got uh, cryogenic weapons now, where you can freeze people. That's all right. Yeah, it's all right. The gravity and the oxygen. Can you it. like break them after you've frozen no. them? Ah, yeah. missed opportunities left and right. Indeed. So apart from the lasers, the cryogenic stuff and the gravity and oxygen it's basically Borderlands okay okay. So, seems like a fair review to me yeah if you like Borderlands get it if you don't like Borderlands don't essentially can't say fairer than that if you look if you're if you've not, never played Borderlands before play the other games yeah play because one was really good I never played two but I enjoyed one yeah yeah uh, if you're a fan a real fan of uh, first person shooters then maybe this is not the the kind of game for you not what you want to be hanging out with. No, no. So yeah, I heard I heard through the grapevine, and uh, you told me just before we started the podcast that you played something else. I did play something else. It's not a review because the game is an early access, and I think okay. it'd be very unfair. <laughs> but um, I've been playing it. I bought it because it's been ages since I played a good car game that's just cars. Okay. And I didn't want to get Drive Club because I just, I, as I'm sure it's. Just whatever. We'll get onto that in the yeah. news. <laughs> um, and I don't, I don't want to. I mean, you've got a Seto Corsa out there, which is just too technical for me. I don't have a steering wheel right now, so I was thinking I want something fun. And the the, the answer was Bugbear, uh, the people that bought us the Flat Out series. Okay. Um, and I think they did um, the 2007 version of Sega Rally as well. Okay. Um, they bought out a car game and they just called it Next Car Game for, for the longest time. Now it's got a, 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 the title Wreckfest. Right. But essentially, it's like... Um, remember Destruction Derby on the mm-hmm. original PlayStation? Yeah. It's that. It's That's the game. You okay. Know? So you're so, in an arena. Yeah, well, what, what it is, you, you at the minute they've got five cars. When I first started playing it, they've got two. Uh, they've got five now. They've got. I've got them written down. Actually, I'll tell you exactly what they are. They have. Um, they've got two American muscle cars, and they're all like. When you look at these things, they're all beaten to shit, and, like rusted, and kind of like the paint's coming off. Mm-hmm. And they, they look brilliant. Like my dream cars. Like <laughs> I love shit boxes, and that's what they are. They're these shit box cars, really nicely modelled. They're. Obviously, loosely based on real cars, but they didn't get the license, so they just kind of, you know, put their own flair on them. So you've got these two sort of American muscles. You've got, um, like, an American sedan, um, a European uh, coupe, which looks a bit like, oh, hard to say, like, it actually reminds me more of when Toyota were building cars that were supposed to look like American muscle cars. Okay. It's this sort of weird kind of coupe looking thing. And then there's this sort of like little uh, kind of stock car looking thing that looks a bit like a big, like the original Mini, but bigger mm-hmm. and rear wheel drive. Really odd little thing. But these are the cars, you know. Um, and you could, you could then, you could pick one of your five cars and I think there's nine tracks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nine different tracks. You've got um, you've got a sand pit. There's a mud pit. Then you've got like two different uh, just arenas, like the old fashioned, just a big fuck off arena, and you just all go and smash into each other. Yeah. And the whole point is just to be the one that's left at the end. You've got a figure of eight race on the same thing as well, which is is actually a race. The point is to win, but obviously to Everyone, survive. Yeah. Then you've got like a tarmac track as well, like a proper sort of race track. Um, there's a speedway 
Uh, there's a, like a really nice sort of gravel track as well. You can put like dirt tires on, so you can change your tires. There's a couple of different options of engine they've got at the minute. They're bringing in um, repairs and modifications and all sorts of shit like that. Uh, so you can set up your cars and things. I'm, I'm sure they'll bring in more cars and tracks as it goes on. But when you start playing the game, the damage is fucking brilliant, man. Like the car hits you and you, it's all dynamic, you know, it's not pre done. So if something hits you, it will fuck your car up as it should be, you know. So what view? What view are you getting? Of this you can car? do, you can do, you can do the float cam behind. Mm-hmm. You can do a close float float cam it's behind the steering wheel on the bonnet, right at the front of the car. You can you can cycle through all the different. What views. do you use? Um, I often use in car behind the steering wheel. Okay. Because I like the I like seeing the body roll on the car. If you know what I mean. Yeah. I like because it feels like the car's got weight. And do the the cars have kind of unique uh, uh, interiors uh, yeah they do yeah it's all they're all they're complete models they're okay. all complete models for, for their own you know their own bits um, but yeah bits. it's for their own bits it's <laughs> great it's it's really it's really good fun the, the actual look of the game is just really it just looks really gorgeous is this all online it, well okay it's only in the last week or so that they've actually got it so you can play against other people online. Up until now, you could play on a LAN, uh, but they've only just put it through that way. I had my first online race this morning, and it okay. was fucking wicked. I haven't had so much fun in a long time. So before that, you were just uh, racing against computer? Just racing against computer, okay. like getting used to the cars. Uh, but today, I went out and I had my first race. The community that were playing it seemed really cool. The guys I was playing with were all pretty... Yeah, they were, they were all playing dirty. Yeah, but like there was no hostility, there was no no one bitching. Everyone was cool. It was really good fun, you know. And uh, there's nothing more satisfying than fucking absolutely obliterating someone's car or just t-boning the shit out of someone. <laughs> and you just know that you've spoiled someone's race, <laughs> and that like the next race, you know they're coming for you. You know what I mean? Because you can see the name of who yeah. it is, so you know they're gonna be like, "I'm fucking doing this guy next time," you know. So then in the next race. When you get T-boned by someone and it's them, you're like, oh, it's, got me back. This, this, this sort of, yeah, like it's a weird kind of reverse camaraderie, but it's that same feeling when someone gets you, when they fucking nail you and you're like, yeah, you deserve it. You deserve it. You got me back. You're, you're doffing your hat. Yeah, it's, really, it's it was a really nice feeling, but it was really good fun. But um, So what's the name of that again? It's called, it's called Next Car Game, colon, Wreckfest. Everyone loves a colon. <laughs> they do love a colon, yeah. Uh, and the developer is Bugbear, as I said, flat out uh, series. Um, it's eight tracks, not nine, sorry. Okay. Made a mistake there, it's eight. Um, but the, 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 the thing about the game is, this is the result of a failed Kickstarter. They wanted to raise, I think, 350000 mm-hmm. Um And it, it just went miserably for them. It didn't work out. So what they did was, instead of cancelling the whole project, because they really wanted to do it, was they um, they put together um, like a, a tech demo, which I think you can download for free okay. on Steam. Um, I think I might be wrong, but um, the point that what it was was like a bunch of kind of weird machines in this sort of VR environment. Right. Um, like there was sort of like a loop the loop that you could do. There was a thing where you could like. Um, there was like a big thing spinning around you could just drive the car into it and it would just smash into the car and send it flying off. Mm-hmm. There was like a cannon you could drive into and it would shoot your car. All sorts of different stuff just to test out how the physics worked and how it, you know, like, you really have fun destroying your car. Kind of proof of concept kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, but like really, really ridiculous things that you'd never see with colourful fucking, like, yes. you know what I mean? But it was fun, like... The, they got like all these um, sort of like domino blocks that you mm-hmm. could just fucking drive and smash through them and nice. really really cool and and I think people played that and, and went like oh like it's what got me as well I, I, I played the tech demo and then I was like oh I, I re- the game must be pretty cool so I got the game and then I've just like how much was it? it was 24 euros I think um, but I didn't care about the price because it was one of those ones where you know that the, I thought well the Kickstarter failed yeah, and they're still producing it they're still doing it so the money that I'm paying for this is helping them produce the game Yeah, it's not like they finished the game off and then the money I give them is just like adding to profit it's like you know I'm helping them 
that produce the game. And so it's it's sat on my Steam account, and probably once a month I'll, I'll go check it out and think, oh, they've updated something, I'll play it for a while, yeah. leave it alone. I'm not too fussed about how quick or slow they are. Like, I'm happy to just roll with it. Would you Eventually, what do you see the kind of end product being like? Are they going to have courses, like uh, endless courses, or like uh, is it going to constantly be like this kind of PvP type thing? I don't know. I mean, I think I think it could potentially go in different ways because, as you see with any other game, you'll have communities that want different things from the game. So you might have a community that say, "We want to use this as a serious race simulator." Because if you if you race properly, then it's sort of like, you know, you've got this really rad damage that can happen, you know? Yeah. So, like, if you accidentally clip someone and they fuck off into the wall, like, the concrete all smashes apart and everything. So the environment is completely, you know, like, all Breakable. the tyre walls. If you hit a tyre wall, there's fucking tyres everywhere, man. <laughs> you know, if you hit the concrete walls, it smashes apart. And so, like, if, if, if there's a community that want to play proper sort of stock car racing... I think there's a lot of fun to be had there because you know, like the the the, the actual engine itself is good. It's yeah. it, you, you, it's a good driving sim. Um, and then if you want to just go and smash into people's cars and do like destruction derby, it's good for that. I think I think there'd be a lot. You could use it for whatever you want. You know, like I, I really like the idea of the, of people. Um, when I say role playing, you know, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like sort of making the making a different game with their own rules. Uh, and just applying that in the way that they do it and using the sim to carry that out. I can see things like that happening probably. So you think it's going to have a, a pretty strong modern culture? I don't know. I don't know what they're doing about mods. I think they would be mad not to let people mod because the first thing I thought is I want my own skin on my own car. Yeah. You know? Um, I think that I think that would be a cool thing to do. Maybe, you know, like user-created tracks. um Maybe they could just give out a development kit and you can sort of do that. I mean, they're open to suggestions as well. It says on their website, if you've got a good idea and you, you want to put it forward, then fucking sweet, let us know, you know, yeah. because, like, you know, we're, we're open to this shit. So, yeah, I, th- I think and hope they do really well with it. And I, I enjoy playing it. And if anyone... Uh, the, the, only, the best way of selling this game to anyone is if you liked Destruction Derby on the original uh, PlayStation, then you will like this. It's exactly the same game on today's technology. Okay. Essentially, Good. and and you will enjoy it. Good. So that's that, basically. Yeah, and uh, I can't wait to see what it's like when it's a finished thing. But yeah, as a as an early alpha, it's uh, it, it's it's good fun, and uh, you feel like you can grow with the game. So cool. That was that. That was a little bonus one there for everyone. Nice. So, what's next? New news. news so that jingle is quite epic isn't it it is yeah I love that I do love it (laughs) news okay let's begin Uh, I'm going to start with Assassin's Creed Unity on the PC yeah the minimum specs have been revealed and and they're fucking meaty yeah let me know if you've got the kind of computer that could run this so the processor has to be a minimum i5 yeah or AMD FX 8350 yeah or AMD Phenon Two, yeah, I, I, I love the way you're even saying it as if you've got no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> X, X4940. Yeah. RAM, 6 gigabytes. Yeah, that's, so this, that's fairly standard. This I is think. minimum. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the, the expectation's a bit higher than this. Yeah. And video card has to be NVIDIA GeForce GTX 6880 or an AMD Radeon HD 7970. So what's the, what's the response of people? Are people... Well, I think people are saying... They're going to have to buy new... People are saying WTF, they are. Ubisoft. What the fuck? Yeah, what's happening here? No, I mean... I'll uh, tell you what's happening. Progress is happening. Yeah, that's PC the thing. PC's pushing the boundaries again. I mean, last... Not last week, the week before, uh, we were talking about how they were keeping both uh, PlayStation and Xbox at 900p. Yeah. Limiting, essentially limiting it. I think with PC, they're just letting it go. They're just like, yeah, that's what I mean. People complain about it, but the thing is, if they've if they're limiting it on consoles, then I think most people can be happy that I mean, if you've got a PC that's running um, current generation games mm-hmm. that are on consoles, yeah, then whatever's released on a console, you're probably always going to get that same performance as a console. Mm-hmm. So that I think the benchmark 
is, is still that you know and then it's like if you have this this gear then you can get like you know you can get even better performance out of it so i see i see sort of that maybe i'm wrong but I, that's what i feel i mean i think if you if you're in the pc game anyway then i think you're used to this kind of thing you're used to spending the money you know you're yeah but then even so like i spent a glut of money on my computer 18 months ago and i haven't had to spend on it since you know like back in the day i remember it was like it felt like every 6 eight nine months you'd be fucking like oh shit i'm i'm, yeah. I'm falling behind you know mm-hmm. but these days i think the consoles have really punctuated the the progress so it's like for the next six to eight years we're on this level yeah and then we're on this so it's i feel like it's kind of regulated a bit more now which which means that like we're not progressing as fast as we used to mm-hmm. but it's kind of like it's a more comfortable it it's not like everyone's constantly spending money the whole time you yeah, know it's like yeah. okay this is going to last me for a couple of years a few years mm-hmm. and i think that's i think that's fine apparently the the artists spent um 2 years rendering the Notre Dame cathedral really so i think that's going to look pretty i think the game's going to look fucking awesome absolutely amazing yeah so yeah i, I mean I'm, I, i've always been an on off fan mm-hmm. of the uh of the assassin's creed uh, franchise, yeah. Um, but every time I play a new Assassin's Creed, I'm always like, suppre- I'm always like, oh, 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 this is actually good fun, you know. Like yeah. I always go into it thinking, ah, oh. and then I start playing it, and I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah. So uh, I think it's because you can just kill fools like properly. Bleh, the the, the underneath blade, thing, yeah. Fucking, I love those like doubled drop attacks. All of the just the, it, and it just feels like boom, boom. It's always know? interesting, like the kind of. Uh, historical period that they go to as well like it's good every every time is something different like, yeah yeah what the uh, last time it was a pirates thing and uh, yeah that was pretty fucking rad actually like i yeah. enjoyed the whole uh, that, that like the, just the mechanic that got of like you know aiming the cannons and yeah fuck, oh it's fucking i didn't think i'd enjoy it but then i did it's exactly the same thing i was yeah. like oh, i'm not gonna get on with this but it was awesome i think everyone has like a kind of Everyone's got a soft soft spot for the French Revolution, I think. So yeah, everyone who's ever seen Les Mis, for example. Mine, I think. What was your favourite so far? In epoch or uh, gameplay? In uh, in, in you know, which which of the Assassin's Creed games has been your favourite? Like which is the one where you were like oh, this overall? Prob- yeah, yeah, probably bro- uh, Brotherhood. Yeah? yeah. What was the one before Brotherhood? Revolutions. Uh, uh, is that the no. one where? Um, Ezio's young. It's been too many now. Because the, which is the one where like the, the it culminates with you killing the Pope? That's Brotherhood. Is it? Pretty sure. It's, oh, I don't I'm think mi- it mixing is. up my Assassin's Creed. Yeah, I, I can't. I think it just might have been two. We've got. I'm not sure. You know, there'll be loads of people screaming at the. Yeah, they'll be going, "You fucking idiots! Do your research." Just you check the emails now. We'll be getting fucking onslaughts. Yeah, people. because it's not, but it's not, people can't. Oh, God. So that's a, we're it's not, not like streaming we're live. live. No, we're not, no. I always thought we were streaming live. No, no. no. I've been following you this whole time and lead, leading you down the garden path. I've been telling people the time and everything. And, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's why, that's why. Yeah. But, uh, no, I think, I think my favourite one was, the, it was the one where, um, where you, you basically fucking, you, you build up and then you, 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 you just end up killing the Pope and I was like yes <laughs> there was a secret part of me that like I felt like I might be personally responsible for the downfall of organised religion I was like this is this is the biggest thing I've ever done then I realised it was just a game I think we should get a, a, a jingle for Andy's weekly anti-religion uh, yeah rant. we should yeah Andy's <laughs> weekly anti-religion rant <laughs> there we go got that's to. it yeah I'll just put like a little some organ music behind it or something <laughs> with like a with like a record scratch at the end <laughs> <laughs> I would love. I, I wanted the Assassin's Creed Three to be my favorite because of of the like the American Revolution that yeah. that kind of era. I really really like. I think I just watched John Adams before that game. Oh, so came you out. were really into it. I was like, come like, on, yeah. and then it wasn't great. But yeah. So what what's your first news story? Uh, okay, so my first news story is uh, Quantum Break. Okay, not Quantum Leap. But Quantum Break, <clears throat> um, it is uh, from Developers Remedy. Mm-hmm. They're the same people that made Alan Wake and the first Max Payne game. Okay. Uh, so, like, you know, you could sort of... Because I was like, Remedy, Remedy, Remedy. And it's like, oh, fuck, yeah. Yeah. F- first thing I went to was Max Payne. I was mm-hmm. like, shit, because I fucking loved that game when it first came out. Um, 
but it's 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 set around um, these three people. You've got a guy called Jack Joyce uh, and Beth Wilder. <coughs> Who is uh, rumored to be the granddaughter of Gene Wilder, but that's not confirmed. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, but uh, they are the sort of they're the protagonists. Uh, I don't know if you switch between the two evenly or if it's weighted one way or the other. Um, but then you've got a guy called Paul Serene, mm-hmm. and these are three people who were friends that were caught up in um, some kind of experiment to do with time. And something happened and they were affected where they've they've basically got powers to affect time. Okay. And it also caused this sort of ripple that, that causes stutters in time as well that everybody else doesn't notice because they're in the timeline that's stuttering. Obviously, they would be completely unaware of it. So that's why they've called it Quantum Brick? Yeah, it is, yeah. And, uh, and your man there, Jack, he is like... When these stut- stutters happen, like time will freeze... But it won't just like stop it or kind of, it's kind of little loops going on. So, you know, like uh, there'll be like a crash and there's like a car flipping over mm-hmm. and halfway through that flipping over, the time freezes and like it'll, the car will sort of be like sort of going backwards and forwards at, at like a certain point in its flip. Mm-hmm. So it'll like be hitting a wall and then going back and then hitting it. Um, and the uh, the bad guys in this who are basically the henchmen of uh, Paul Serene, um, they have got these technology that means that they can also operate within the stutters to combat against Jack. Okay. So there's, this, there's, there's all these sort of combat, combat uh, 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 mechanisms that work in this space or this, this time stutter. So everything's kind of frozen apart from these few bits and bobs that are happening. And he can, for instance, like use his powers to throw to, to unfreeze a car from its timeline stutter where it'll, it'll continue to roll on its path and if there's bad guys in the way it'll like hit them and kill them but then it'll always roll back to where it was because time's always trying to stay linear so it'll the car will, yeah the car will go back to where it was and you could probably use it again or it could be used against you and so on and so forth okay but the the, the visuals look really fucking cool uh, and there's sort of there's this really great uh, basically the, they released a 16 minute long gameplay trailer and they they, they talk you through it the guy um, that talks you through it is it's Remedy's uh, guy Sam Lake mm-hmm. um, and he he looks like Max Headroom actually which is really awesome but that's, a, <laughs> that's a compliment I'm not knocking the guy it's cool to look like Max Headroom uh, and on the video I was watching, the video was stuttering a little bit, which is cool on two levels because time stutters. And also Max Headroom, quite famously, does that whole stuttering thing. Anyway, I um, don't know if that's what they're going for. But in the in the gameplay trailer, he's talking you through all the mechanics as it happens. You should go and check it out. If, if, if anyone hasn't seen this, then uh, I guess go to Remedy's website. It, it will be on there or just search uh, Quantum Break. And just watch the whole thing, mm-hmm. and it, it does look really cool. There's this bit where, like, um, like there's a bridge that he's got to get across, and the the, the sort of bad guys are, are, are running a control on the bridge and checking all the cars. You know, they're sort of intertwined with government and stuff. Okay. And so he's got to get picked up by Beth. So they've arranged a meeting point, but it gets it gets infiltrated, and so he has to get across the bridge. And this this huge boat, like a big haulage kind of tanker starts to crash beneath it and the mast like starts to break the bridge and it's all ripping through and the bridge is starting to fall down and then it kind of one of these time stutters happens so as it happens the bridge is about to fall down and there's all this twisted metal that he's then like running on and jumping across like road signs that are falling down and frozen in time sort of create these weird air bridges that he can run along Mm -hmm. and get but they also are prone to move at any point the timeline could just continue so if you're on one of these things, it could just continue to happen or even go backwards. Okay. So it's it's constantly like, you know, you're constantly in peril. It just, look, it, it just looks really great. But um, the other thing that uh, interested me was that they got somebody in from CERN who used to work at CERN. He's like a scientist lecturer that works at CERN who came in to help them make sure that the the way the science of the game doesn't kind of it basically it all lines up with current theoretical physics okay so that like everything in the game should i mean what, how really how you know how tight it you know how well it sticks to that remains to be seen but the whole thing they're trying to do is to try and 
keep it within the realms of theoretical physics. Okay. So it should be quite, you know, it's not, it's a pseudoscience because it's in a game and they're going to glamorize it, but essentially they're trying to keep it realistic, which is really cool. Nice, nice. So there's that. And that does look really cool. So everyone should go and check out that. That's just, I think they just released that today. Cool. Good. Good. What have you got? Next, uh, the story about Dragon Age Inquisition Sexy Time. <coughs> sexy Time. Sexy Time. Yes. So uh, it's been revealed through the rating process that uh, the new Dragon Age game will have some kind of risky content. Oh. Uh, lots of boobs, bombs. Tossos is a bit where dicks. There's going to be any dicks in well, there. Well, there's implied fellatio. Implied really? fellatio. Implied fellatio. My second favourite kind of fellatio. Yeah. Uh, and just I love some of these lines that, that have been highlighted from it. Like, Could you read it to me as though we're doing like a reading and you're in for an audition? Okay. Okay. So um, <clears throat> pretend I've said whatever lead up, it leads up <clears throat> to this. Could I will. You- I will bring myself sexual pleasure later. Well, thinking about this with great respect. Could I try it okay. in a voice? Because okay. I think I could do it better than you. What? What's this? Is this hieroglyphics? <laughs> I do. Is this writing? <laughs> Are you a doctor? <laughs> what? So, um, okay. I'll do, I, I reckon I can pull this off in a much more sexy voice than you. <sighs> oh. I will bring myself sexual pleasure later. While well, thinking about this with great respect. I am I'm, I'm slightly turned on. Yeah. I'm gonna admit I'm slightly turned on. Uh, okay. <laughs> re, re, hit me with the next line. Next line is the way your tits bounce the way your tits bounce when I pin your arms and take you on the side of the bed. Wow. Yes. That sounds almost I'm, I'm a bit scared of that one to be honest. What 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 do you think about Sex in video games, like, does it creep you out? Is it the idea of controlling sex in a video game, or the idea of it being a cutscene? I mean, what- I don't want to control it in a video game. I don't because that would make me feel. Imagine connect, like a connect sex game. Yeah, that would make me feel weird. But I don't have a problem with sex being in a video game because, like, at the end of the day, sex is the fucking most natural thing and the most necessary thing that we do. It's our prime function, and it's quite fun. Well, yeah, it's it's good. It's like the whole point of us being here on Earth. People say, what's the meaning of life? Fucking is exactly the meaning of life. Yeah. It's that simple. So that I don't see why it shouldn't be in a computer game. You know and what I mean? When- there are exceptions. Yeah. But, you know, I, I sort of think, yeah, man. I was really bummed in GTA uh, um, 4 when uh, ne- there's that whole storyline with Nico and Michelle and they have to go on, he has to take her on dates. And like he goes back to the apartment, mm-hmm. and and then the, the 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 camera just sort of cuts across the rooftops, and they're, they're, they're t- and I was like, what are you doing that for? Like li- I'm literally I've just I've just killed a fucking like twenty cops, some some innocent bystanders. <laughs> there was that area with Orthodox Jews walking around, and I ran them over too. So I've just I've just done some kind of heinous hate crime. I've killed cops and prostitutes, to be honest, <laughs> killed them. And then, and then we can't see sex. Yeah. Like, what? The, what the fuck, man? But do you not think that was maybe a choice because, like, showing sex in your video games can be just—it's much harder to to show sex in a video game than it is to show violence. Like, it's it's easier to show shit sex or laughable sex. Than yeah, it, I guess. Like the making whoopee in The Sims. Shit yeah. Like that. The thing is, I like well GTA Five is I think the first video game I've played with an actual sex scene where you actually see someone having sex. Okay. Where there's a bit where you first get introduced to Trevor and him and uh, Johnny K's girlfriend are having sex in his like trailer. And it's like really just like the worst kind of sex you can imagine, you know? Like she, she's kind of leaning forward over the kitchen counter, sort of l- looking like she's... Like she's trying to pretend to enjoy it, but really isn't that into it. And he's kind of behind with his really like weirdly stained t-shirt and his pants around his ankles, just kind of. And you're just like, oh god, you, it's a really weird. You know, you think that's bad sex? No. no oh yeah, <laughs> no, it's you know what I mean. It's this really kind of. It's almost mundane. Yeah. You know, I mean, they made a sex scene mundane and boring, and I thought it was great. I, I loved what they did. You know, they made it really but, like. But that's easy. It's much easier for a, a, a computer game company to do that when it makes it laughable. 
when I don't think in Dragon Age, I imagine their sex things are not going to be like comedy. How do you do that in a, in a video game? And not I think you tackle it the same way as you would in a film, to be honest. So like, I'd go the same way. And- yeah, you know, like the the the, the you know the, the lovers come together. Well, I mean that's that's the whole point. <laughs> I they, they get together. That's, that's and a then, myth. You know, then maybe maybe you know like cutscene they go off to the bedroom and you think oh that's all they're going to show us but no through the keyhole it comes oh or just like the camera kind of goes around and it's just outside the window Mm -hmm. and you can just see through a crack in the in the curtains maybe you can control the camera so like just look from side to side yeah you know what i mean and there's like there's like a heart rate so you have to like press a button in rhythm so your heart rate doesn't get up and you don't like steam up the window when you breathe on there or you don't like in real life you know (laughs) <laughs> like when, you, when you're looking through a window people are having sex you, you yeah. don't want to steam up the window no you have so to avoid the, that oh, yeah but I, I think I think I don't, I don't have a problem with it okay. that's, that's essentially it uh, good yeah <laughs> is that that there was something else in my head but I can't remember what yeah, it was probably wasn't so. important no, no. Uh, I've got another one good uh, the black glove or Rac- racist the black glove I, it sounded like I said the back glove I thought then my arm wasn't strong enough um, yeah, yeah, they're always really strong enough. No. It's from the developers Day for Night Games. Uh, it's comprised of mostly people that worked on all of um, Irrational's Bioshock games. Okay. Um, and they released uh, like a, a preview for Kickstarter. They're trying to get a Kickstarter up now so they can get investment. And I'm, I'm actually thinking, I'm actually thinking of putting money into it Mm -hmm. because it looks really cool Um, the preview video the look and the sound and the feel of the whole thing it it feels that it's it's like you're in a Bioshock world it's got that same sort of uh, quirky steampunk sort of it's not really steampunk it's sort of old fashioned it's got that sort of Victorian look to it and it's not it's uh, that's because like Bioshock was really sort of art deco kind of there was this sort of weird steampunky thing going on and sort of you know you got that certain fear it's, it's got that it feels like part of the same spiritual family um, the voice acting is that same sort of feel as well you know I don't know yeah. if they've got the same people in doing it um, but it's really cool they've got they've got people in you know specifically do music and it's not it's not like anything's an afterthought like you know that every part of this game is going to be it's going to be thought out but the, the the point of the game is, and, and it sort of ties into the last thing we were talking about with uh, with Quantum Break. It follows three co-creators of a project, um, and it's I think one of them's a filmmaker, one of them's an artist, and one of them's a musician, mm-hmm. and they're working together to create this this project. I, I don't know exactly what it is, but the whole point of the black glove is, um, it's like this glove that you put on, and on the front of it there's like a lens here when you look at it that way there's just a hole through your hand okay. and you can sort of hold it over things and you can look uh, at different things and they've got this mirror interface with all different options on and the point is that you get to go back into the past in these different people's lives and change their end product by changing their influences in their past so you know if someone's recording um, like a bit of incidental music or a track or an opening track for it you could influence the style of it by influencing their past so it could change, for instance, from something jazzy to something like country. Okay. You know, uh, and the different sort of styles and visuals. You, it's all that way. So I think it's a really interesting idea. It's something I've never really, I've never really seen that before. You know, yeah. so it grabbed me. And I was like, oh, that sounds fucking cool. So it's almost like you're designing the project around their storyline by changing the influences to what you want it to be. Okay. So sure. it, it feels kind of creative. Yeah. As, as a player, it feels like the player's creating something as well. So I like that. Do you have any idea on like uh, like the Quantum Break game? Any idea on like release date for that or Quantum? Oh, Quantum Break is supposed to be it said Q two, two thousand fifteen. Okay, so uh, but I, April I, I'm sure that's going to be yeah a bit you know a bit grey. And what about I, I take it that's just whenever they get the Kickstarter going? Yeah, well the kick the Kickstarter ends on oh shit, what day are we on now? Twenty fourth. I think it got seventeen days left to it. It's probably another 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 couple of weeks on the Kickstarter. Okay. Okay. But um in three days they're gonna do an AMA on Reddit. Right. So um you know, keep your eye open for that as well. Get on there and they obviously just fielding questions about the whole project. So I think that's gonna be 
that's going to be something to look out for. I'm going to be following that because that's exactly the sort of game I want to play. Cool. cool. So that's that one. Good. Over to you. Uh, my next one is regarding uh, the fact that I just maxed out on the mic there. I'm sorry. I, I leaned forward. That's okay. Don't uh, lean forward. Yeah. Uh, Drive Club. Yeah. Connect- connectivity. Street game. Sorry, I sneezed a little bit then. <laughs> Released October 7th. Yeah. This is now October 24th. And people can still not connect to the game. Yeah. It's, it's, it's better than it was. but You still- can play offline though, right? Yeah, but apparently, apparently there's not much f- functionality yeah. with offline stuff. So I was talking to a guy outside a pub. That's not, obviously a good place for source. Yeah, yeah, and and he was a real advocate of of, uh, of Drive Club, and he was sort of you know saying that, that he really enjoys it because I think there is a market out there for people who don't want all the bullshit setting up; they just want to get out there and race. Yeah, but I think that's lame. It's it's harsh when you're paying. Like in, in over here, you pay six and nine ninety nine in euros for for a game that's essentially broken because you can't play it as it's intended. Yeah, yeah, and like the servers failed first of all when it when it launched, and it had this one in one out policy, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> really, you could, you could only connect when someone disconnected. <laughs> oh my god, I've been to nightclubs like that. <laughs> and the, the two and a half weeks later, still get problems. The the free PSN. Uh, version that was promised has still not happened Yeah, because that's what the one that I was hoping to review okay. so I didn't have to pay for the fucking game uh, so and apparently people I don't know how many people but some guys who have bought the game on the Playstation store have successfully managed to get a refund oh okay which you know if you buy it from GameSpot you're, GameStop you're never going to get because they'll yeah. say you've just played it and yeah, yeah. but other people apparently have been asking for the refunds on the store and have been told that they've got too many trophies because obviously they played oh, too much of the game okay. and they're not getting the refunds for that fair enough but I mean what do you you get this kind of argument I've, se- I've heard this argument I've seen it online about oh what can you expect as an online game this is going to happen but that's no, a, to because, me that's not good enough no it's not because there are online games out there that work perfectly fine where you don't have a problem getting online and if one company can do it then everyone can do yeah, it I mean Destiny Destiny had minor problems but that was that was online I would imagine with fucking at least 10 times more people than try to play Drive Club yeah and, and look I mean look at GTA 5 when that hit you know like that, that must, there must have been I mean they must they must have had so many more servers than they needed ready or they'd very accurately predicted what they want they had very few real problems in yeah. that respect you know what I mean yeah. I, I had a couple of times when I, I couldn't get a race or something but it didn't spoil my it didn't not, not, a, not along them lines you know yeah. what I mean yeah so uh, yeah, I, th- I think it's I think it's poppycock. It's just like for me, maybe uh, there, there should be a pricing structure where if you if you're releasing a game like this, then the customer pays a certain amount of money, maybe half the half the price, and then when they when they manage to get online successfully, like a few times, then they have to pay the rest of the game. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, like so, it's, it's an incentive for the for the developers or the publishers or whoever's dealing with that side of it. To fucking get it right. Yeah. yeah. As opposed to just taking your money and then not really caring because they've got your money anyway. So why why should they break their backs to get the, the connections working? Yeah, I know what you mean. Well, we'll see we'll see where it goes. Yeah. I, I think it's bullshit. And I think there's, there'd be a lot of people out there that would have given them time uh, to get this sorted. But I think two and a half weeks later and you're still having problems. And I think there'll be a lot of people that, are, that, have just, that will just give up in the game. Because, yeah, yeah I just don't think it's worth it. So. Well, I think, I'll tell you what we could do. We could do if anyone has Drive Club and they they want to um, complain. Yeah. We could do like a little stab that they could cut out of the the podcast and just send them like a little soundbite. Like, give us my fucking money back. No, I was, I was thinking something like, uh, sort it out, you slags. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> nice. You nice. Can just take, you can take that out. No no royalties or anything like that. Yeah. Just take it, send it to him. Send the email without anything else. So yeah. Just that sound clip. And just say, it. Andy says, and then just put that in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then at the end, just just put on there, no, no offence. Yeah. No no offence intended. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, I've got one more thing. Good. Um, GTA San Andreas, Xbox 360. Um, confirmed yesterday by Rockstar, they will be releasing on the 26th, which is in two days, on Xbox Marketplace... Um, a new kind of updated version which is going to have 720p resolution 
uh, enhanced draw distances. It's going to have achievements. Uh, it's unfortunately not going to be compatible with old save games from okay. the Xbox Originals. But I think they've taken the Xbox Originals version off the market now. Yeah. So that no one can accidentally buy that. And then they're selling this. Um, I don't think they're offering any special deals to anyone else that bought that one. But um, I think that, I think they tried to let people know as soon as possible. And uh, a deal on price? Uh, I haven't got a clue on price right now. I think it'll be quite reasonably priced. Okay, good. That's very unvague. You seem quite excited about this. I take it you're jumping back in. I think I am. I think I'm going to yeah. get it. Yeah, yeah. Cool. If it's... Well, if if it's more than if it's more than like sort of twenty five euros, yeah, probably not. Yeah, but but like you know, if I uh, if I have a little win on the pools, <laughs> you know what I mean, <laughs> I might be in there. So so that's that. I think that might wrap up the news. Cool. Yeah, uh, it's time for <laughs> Andy's mailbag. So we got Josh from Phoenix. He says, or he writes, <laughs> um, while living for a short time in the UK. I got addicted to the English breakfast fry-up. Listening to your show last week, I nearly choked on a dry piece of toast. What is your ideal breakfast fry-up? He doesn't doesn't specify who he's asking. I think he's asking me, but I'll let you answer as well, Graham. But I don't don't eat English breakfast. I eat a a full Scottish breakfast. Well, I I think... um, Is that implied? Yeah, I think he he sort of thought Britain... I mean, pretty much all is England anyway. I see a better together voter. <sighs> Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? But uh, yeah. So what's your so so? Let's say like your what's your ideal breakfast fry up? Let's leave the well. No, actually, he says there. He says, "What is your ideal breakfast fry up?" He doesn't say English. Okay, cool, cool. cool he cool. said he got addicted to English breakfast, but he's asking what's your ideal breakfast so, fry up. So he's been inclusive. So he's he's been very sensitive. Okay, good. Yeah. Good. Well, first of all, no beans because okay. beans in a fry up. That's wrong. Really? Yeah, I don't like that. Okay. Don't like that. Okay. I would have one fried egg, just for the lubrication of the kind of yolk. Yeah, yeah, okay. Right. Okay, yeah, I can see you. A link, just one link. I'm not, I'm not a big link fan. Okay. A link sausage, yeah, everyone knows what that is. Yeah, yeah like a, like what everyone would know is a normal sausage. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then square slice, square sausage. A lawn sausage. Yep, two yeah. of them. Yeah. Uh, haggis. How much haggis like uh, a sort of... Like, like, like a handful like, okay, yeah, yeah. Like, a, like a little pile on the side there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Stone the way black pudding. Oh, yeah. What else? What else? Are you a white pudding fan? Never had it. It, no? it looks like when a dog's jobby has been left out in the cold. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. Uh, potato scone, tatty scone. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Love that. Known as, uh, uh, I guess, grits or um, uh, a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, hash brown to yeah, most people yeah but those people are wrong okay and 14 slices of bacon fuck yeah <laughs> mine is very similar yeah uh, except I do want beans right see I do I want between a quarter to a third of a can of beans mm-hmm. but not just normal I usually pop a little bit of Coca-Cola in there Coca-Cola uh, in your beans a little bit of Coca-Cola in the beans right and then just a little just a touch just a just a flash of mayo in the in the actual pan when you're doing them, and it just goes. It's, it's a bit more creamy, and maybe a, a, a bit of pepper and a tiny bit of vegetable stock. Get them ready. That's the most flamboyant beans I've ever heard. It in my is, life. it is, but it's great. Uh, I I want I want one egg, but I want it to be a double yolka, right? I want that there. Then uh, I would opt for three links and no lawn sausage. You don't I'm not, want lawn. I'm not a lawn sausage. No, I'm not a lawn sausage fan. I, I've, I, it's, I don't know what it is about them. I just can't get on with them. Then um, I would like uh, a, a potato waffle. So it's uh, but but fried as opposed to to baked, you okay. know, of, oven yeah. roasted. So it's very crispy. I love a really nice crispy potato grid. Would there be a, a bird's eye potato waffle? I, did, I didn't want to go for brand names. It could be that or alter, an alternative brand. Okay. Um, then again, uh, uh, a black pudding, maybe two slices. Mm-hmm. I can, I can white pudding. I can take it or leave it. Okay, you know, I'm not bothered if it's there. But then I need to have some fried mushrooms, well, like left, very thinly sliced. But there, that. I should have had um, that. a plum tomato that's not from a can. You know, what I mean, one of the I want one of the ones that's that's properly been peeled 
from fresh and fried and then yeah and then fried and rolled nice and evenly mm-hmm. oh, one of those um and then sort of as many rashers of bacon as you can fit there which are sitting on top of uh, a very well fried piece of toast <sighs> yeah that is my fucking idea and then i would cut the 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 the, 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 the fried toast into triangles and then like just like pierce the first bit of egg with that with that lovely oh, I can taste it already I'm half chopped yeah that's 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 mine nice I remember yeah. when when I first went to college in the morning when you when we got there you go to the, the canteen and you get a roll yeah on the roll would be black pudding bacon and square slice oh. on the one roll no wonder Scottish people have got health problems but yeah, that, that but was amazing. it happens everywhere. Yeah. Yorkshire, yeah, Norwich. You know what I mean. Let's name some other English. Wide, <laughs> widespread. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, next one. So I think you're the next one. You've got yeah. the next one. Yeah. So it's Dave from East Renfrewshire. Yeah. It's very specific. Very specific. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he has asked us to give more of a kind of warning of our spoilers. Yeah. Yeah. We've, we had a couple like that, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Because we've often. <laughs> Gotten excited about something bloody well, given the game away, and then yeah. afterwards, got all oh, that's a spoiler. Yeah, I, so, I, I think it is because we've got so much exciting when we're talking about these kind of things. Full of energy, aren't yeah, we? You know yeah. what I mean? We're like, we're like newborn lambs. We're yep. just ready to go. Bursting forward. With Bursting to go, chat. we are. Yeah, so sorry about that dive. dive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think. Oh, yeah. I've got one more here. Uh, Chris from Aberdoom or Aberdeen. Um, he says I think this is in response to one of the first episodes Okay. he says not everyone in Aberdeen is a junkie my mate Colin has never touched drugs <laughs> so he says so that's, so that's what, proof that's proof that not everyone in Aberdeen is a junkie I think we've got another beef you versus the city of Aberdeen yeah I think it is I could take them on you think yeah honestly because they're I'm, all skinny because they're all they're all scaggeds so I <laughs> I just burst in there, blow them on their backs. Yeah. You know, well, I'm, you know, like with, <laughs> with my mate. No, not with my mate. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. blow. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just uh, just sort of do a bit of uh, Karate. sort of walking around like this. <laughs> He's waving his arms. Yeah, like doing a sort of a cockney walk <laughs> around. Yeah. And that'd be that. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So that was news. We've done, uh, we've done, Everything no, that wasn't news. That was emails. That we've was done emails. news. We've done our reviews. We've done what have we been up to this week? Is there anything else? Well, actually, we should basically talk to people about how fucking awesome they are because last week was our biggest week yet. Yeah, it was. It was. The numbers were were numeric. Yes, they were. They were uh, integer numbers. Yeah, and they were big, and we feel kind of special. Like, I, I hate when you when you see people on TV and stuff saying that they feel humbled. I just feel like I want to glass them in the face. Yeah, because you're like, no, you you don't feel humbled. I feel kind of um, like the like good pride, not bad pride, yeah, not yeah. like not like um, a big like shit. oh I'm I'm the shit. It's more like I just feel really I really feel really happy that someone's enjoying what we're doing. Yeah, you know, yeah. we're getting good feedback, we're getting good downloads. It's it's great. It can just encourage you to keep kind of promoting us. I know I know you're doing your best. We get messages from you tell, telling us that you've told someone about us. Yeah, that's really cool. Just. Tell people about the Pedestrians podcast. Anyone you know that likes film, TV, or games, yeah, get them on it, like a car bonnet. Yeah, uh, sub- subscribe on U- uh, YouTube. Subscribe on iTunes. Well, we're gonna be on YouTube as well. I think uh, within a day or two of this being uh, on iTunes and everything, we're gonna upload our back catalogue onto YouTube. So we can sort of maybe reach people there as well. Yep. And then if anyone you know is more of a, a, a YouTuber and that's more their thing, you can tell them to find us there. Yep. Again, it's it's exactly the same. It's just it's just, just search pedestrians yep. on YouTube and you, you'll find us that way. Keep in touch on um, Twitter. We like getting little snippets from you. Yes, we do. That way. Uh, we also like to post humorous things. So, I mean, because we are quite humorous people. So We are funny. Yeah. We are. So check out yep. Twitter if you want to be... Humorized, yeah. Or if you want to humorize us, yeah, yeah. Either way, feel free to uh, uh, whatever mutual, mutual, mutual humorization, mutual humoration. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, email us pedestrians at gmail dot com. 
Yeah, and it's uh, www.pedestrians.net. And at us. Pedestrians on Elo and at Pedestrians on Twitter. Yes, we're on Elo. We were one of the first people there. Yes. <laughs> Bam. We, we've, put, we've put a flag in and we've sticked yeah, it for Yeah, we are um, fucking there. Yeah. With, uh, with all the... I'm not going to announce this. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there anything else? No. No.